The Crimean Nogai raids were slave raids carried out by the Khanate of Crimea and by the Nogai Horde into the region of Rus then controlled by the Grand Duchy of Moscow until 1547, by the Tsardom of Russia 1547 by the Russian Empire 1721 onwards, and by the Grand Duchy of Lithuania part of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth from 1569. These raids began after Crimea became independent about 1441 and lasted until the peninsula came under Russian control in 1774. Their main purpose was the capture of slaves, most of whom were exported to the Ottoman slave markets in Constantinople or elsewhere in the Middle East. The raids were an important drain of the human and economic resources of Eastern Europe. They largely inhabited the settlement of the wild fields. The steppe and forest steppe land which extends from a hundred or so miles south of Moscow to the Black Sea and which now contains most of the Russian and Ukrainian population. The raids also played an important role in the development of the Cossacks. Estimates of the number of people involved vary. According to Alan W. Fisher the number of people deported from the Slavic lands on both sides of the border during the 14th to 17th centuries was about 3 million. Michael Kadarkovsky estimates that 150,000 to 200,000 people were abducted from Russia in the first 50 years of the 17th century. The RST major Tatar raid for slaves occurred in 1468 and was directed into Galicia. Crimean Khan Devlet I Guri even managed to burn down Moscow during the 1571 campaign. The last raid into Hungary by the Crimean Tatars took place in 1717. In 1769 a last major Tatar raid, which took place during the Russo-Turkish War, saw the capture of 20,000 slaves. What made the ''wild field'' so forbidding were the Tatars. Year after year, their swift raiding parties swept down on the towns and villages to pillage, kill the old and frail, and drive away thousands of captives to be sold as slaves in the Crimean port of Kaffa, a city often referred to by Russians as ''the vampire that drinks the blood of Rus'' For example, from 1450 to 1586, 86 raids were recorded, and from 1600 to 1647, 70. Although estimates of the number of captives taken in a single raid reached as high as 30,000, the average figure was closer to 3,000. In Padilla alone, about one-third of all the villages were devastated or abandoned between 1578 and 1583. Causes Economic factors Most of the raids fell on territory of today's Russia and Ukraine, lands previously divided between Muscovy and Lithuania, although some fell on Moldavia and Circassia North Caucasus. A considerable part of the male population of Crimea took part in these campaigns. The main economic goal of the raids was booty, some of it material, but most of it human. These human trade goods were mostly sold onto the Ottoman Empire, although some remained in Crimea. Slaves and freedmen formed approximately 75% of the Crimean population. According to the Encyclopaedia Britannica, it is known that for every slave the Crimeans sold in the market, they killed outright several other people during their raids, and a couple more died on the way to the slave market. The main slave market was Kaffa, which after 1475 was part of the coastal strip of Crimea that belonged to the Ottomans. In the 1570s, close to 20,000 slaves a year went on sale in Kaffa. Political factors The Crimean Khanate broke off from the Golden Horde in 1441. When the Horde came to an end in 1502 the buffer between Crimea and its northern neighbors disappeared. The Khans took advantage of the conflicts between Lithuania and Moscow, allying now with one, then with the other, and using the alliance with one as a justification to attack the other. During the Russo-Lithuanian War of 1500–1506 the Crimeans were allied with Russia and penetrated deep into Lithuania. Relations soon deteriorated. Near-continuous raids on Muscovy began in 1507. Military The theater of war 
At the beginning of this period, between the Crimean Khanate and the Duchy of Moscow lay almost 700 miles of thinly populated grassland, the so-called Wild Fields. The Oka River, 40 miles south of Moscow, was both the principal and last line of defense. It was guarded by the Beregovaya Slujba, river bank service. This continued to exist even after the construction of the Belgorod Line far to the south. Its troops rarely crossed the Oka, even when there were massive Tatar attacks on the fortresses to the south. Between Muscovy and Crimea there were three main routes also known as trails. To avoid fords they generally followed the high ground between one river basin and another. The Moravsky Trail was the western route. It began at the headwaters of the Samara River Dnieper and tended north-northwest across tributaries Seversky Donetsk River. It then crossed to the watershed of the Vorskla River to the east of the Belgorod area. In the steppe north of Belgorod, at the sources of the Donets, Pel and Donet Samitsa there is a place called Dumchi Kurgan. Here the trail split. The main branch went northeast and at the headwaters of the Seam River joined the Izyumsky Trail. To the west the Bekayev Trail went between the Seam River and the Sayal River and the Paknutsky Trail went northwest to the upper reaches of the Oka River. The Izyumsky Trail, like the Moravsky Trail, started at the upper reaches to the Samara but went directly north to Izium Kurgan where the Tatars crossed the Donets. It then passed west of Oskol River and at the headwaters of the Wolf River and the Nizagal River there was a branch to the east which led to the Oskol Basin and the Kalmius Trail. Continuing further between the Korosha River and the upper right tributaries of the Oskol the Izyumsky Trail connected to the Moravsky Trail at the sources of the Seam River. The villages of the Belgorod district were to the west and those of the Oskol district were to the east. North of the junction the trail led north and crossed to the basin of the Bystreya Sosna River. Having crossed this river the Tatars could turn to the Zusha River, a tributary of the Oka, and the Novosel, Mt. Sensk and Chernsky districts, or cross to the upper reaches of the Mecca River and the villages around Tula. The Kalmius Trail began east of the other two at the upper Kalmius River north of the Sea of Azov. The Tatars crossed the Donets River west of Ader and headed the north between the Oskol River and the Ader River passing east of Veluki. They usually crossed the Tikaya Sosna River at Stone Ford, but there were other crossings. Further north trail forded the Bystreya Sosna River. In addition to these three steppe trails there were others, usually connected to the main three. The Savinsky Trail crossed the Donets above Izium Kurgan and connected with the Izyumsky Trail. East of the three main trails was the Nogai Trail which was used by the independent Nogai who lived in the Caspian and Kuban region. It crossed the upper Bitug River between Voronezh and the Tsna River. All to the Tatar invasion routes tended to follow the high and dry lands between river basins to avoid river crossings, swamps and forests. The raiding parties were always accompanied by guides who knew the steppe country, the easiest fords and best camping places. Topic. Tactics According to the 16th-century English diplomat Giles Fletcher, the Elder, the Tatars would split into several groups, attack one or two places on the border and then direct their main attack to another place that had been left undefended. They fought in small groups. They would sometimes mount straw dummies on their spare horses to make themselves appear more numerous. According to the 16th-century French mercenary Jacques Marguerite, 20,000 to 30,000 Tatar horsemen would attack the main Russian force while other troops would devastate the Russian lands and return without suffering much damage. They deliberately spread false rumors about their strength and plans. The French engineer Beauplan, who had participated in the war against them, gave a good description of Tatar tactics in the 1630s and 1640s in what is now Ukraine. He said that the Tatars looked oriental and could be easily distinguished from the Russians and Poles. A Tatar horseman was armed with a saber, bow and quiver with 18-20 arrows. On his belt was a knife, an awl and a flint for making fires. He also carried 10 or 12 yards of rope to tie up prisoners. They were skilled horsemen and each man usually had two spare horses. When crossing a river they loaded their clothing and equipment on a light raft, tied it to a horse and crossed the river swimming, holding on to the horse's mane. Both large and small groups raided in summer. Winter raids were rare, but always involved large numbers of warriors. When they reached a populated area, groups of several hundred split off from the main body. These spread out through the countryside and surrounded villages. 
so that no one would escape at night they lit large fires. They then robbed, burned and slaughtered and carried away not only men, women and children, but bulls, cows, goats and sheep. The fate of the captives On the steppe The condition of the captives as they were being carried to the Crimea was very difficult. Held in bondage, divided into small groups, hands tied behind their backs with rawhide straps, tied to wooden poles with ropes around their necks, held at the end of a rope, surrounded by and tied to horsemen, they were driven by whips across the steppe without stopping. The weak and infirm often had their throats cut so they would not delay the march. They were often fed the meat of worn-out horses. Reaching the lower Dnieper where they were relatively safe from Cossacks, the Tatars let their horses graze freely while they set about dividing the captives each of whom had been marked with a hot iron. Having received their slaves as inalienable property each Tatar could do with them as he wished. According to Sigismund von Herberstein, "...the old and infirm, who were not worth much money, were given to the Tatar youths like rabbits to hunting dogs for their first military practice and were either stoned to death, or thrown into the sea or killed in some other way." Here are the words of Duke Antoine de Gramont who was with the Polish Tatar army during the campaign of King John Casimir on the left bank Ukraine in 1663–1664 when, according to him, about 20,000 were captured. The Tatars slit the throats of all men over 60 years old who were thought to be incapable of work, 40-year-olds were saved for the galleys, young boys for their pleasure and girls and women to continue their kind and then later to be sold. The prisoners were divided equally and lots were cast according to age so that no one could complain that he had gotten more old ones than young. To their credit I must say that they were not stingy with their booty and with extreme politeness offered it to all who came their way. In Crimea and Turkey In Crimea they were driven to the slave market and placed in single file, bound together by the neck. The buyers carefully inspected the slaves, starting with their exterior appearance and ending with intimate parts of their bodies, to be sure that there were no missing or blackened teeth, warts, bumps or other imperfections. Beautiful girls were especially valued. The main slave market was at Kaffa which after 1475 belonged to the Ottoman Empire. The town had artillery and a strong garrison of Janissaries. Besides Kaffa, slaves were sold in Karasubazar, Tuzleri, Bakshisarai and Kaslave. Slave dealers came from various backgrounds, Turks, Arabs, Greeks, Armenians and others. For the right to trade they paid tax to the Crimean Khan and Turkish Pasha. In Kaffa there were sometimes as many as 30,000 slaves, mostly from Muscovy and the southeastern lands of the Commonwealth. Ruthenian slaves were slightly more valuable than those from Muscovy since the latter were considered treacherous and likely to run away. Michaelon Litvin described Kaffa as an insatiable and lawless abyss, drinking our blood. Besides the bad food, water, clothing and shelter, they were subjected to exhausting labor and abuse. According to Litvin, the stronger slaves were castrated, others had their noses and ears slit and were branded on the forehead or cheek. By day they were tormented with forced labor and at night kept in dungeons. Muslim, Armenians, Jews, and Greek traders all purchased Slavic slaves at Kaffa from the Crimean Tatars. Once sold they were transported to distant provinces, Greece, Syria, and Anatolia. On the way they had to endure torment, often a ship was so overcrowded that they could neither move nor lie down on the deck. They ate and slept standing up. Under such conditions large numbers grew sick and died, the latter being thrown into the sea. Men were often sent to the Turkish galleys where they were worked to exhaustion chained to the benches. One galley slave who managed to escape was Ivan Bolotnikov who later led an uprising. According to the Greeks, during the Ottoman epoch three or four ships arrived at Constantinople every day loaded with Russian slaves. A significant number were sent to Anatolia for agricultural work. Female captives were sent to rich homes for carnal pleasure and harems, while the less beautiful were assigned domestic work. The Venetian monk Giovanni Carraro wrote that in Constantinople there was little demand for hired servants since the place was full of Russian slaves. Perhaps the most famous of these was the Sultan's wife Roxolana. Michaelon Litvin wrote, 
all of them, that is the Eastern peoples, eagerly seek wives among the Slavonic captives. The current Sultan's favorite wife and the mother of his son and heir was abducted from our land. The Parakop Khan, Sahib Ghari, was born a Christian and is married to a Christian. The ministers of these tyrants, their eunuchs, secretaries and other officials and their special troops, who are called Janissaries, all have come from our blood. Despite the large number of slaves sent to Asia Minor, there was no shortage of them in Crimea. Many slaves were used for domestic work, the digging of wells, the production of salt and the gathering of dung on the steppe. The women were concubines and also performed household chores, yarn making and the care of children and domestic animals. <laughs> Resistance to the raids Russia In addition to simple self-defense, the Russians slowly pushed a line of forts and walls southward, behind which grew an increasing peasant population, until, after 250 years, the Crimea was overwhelmed. See Zasiknaya Cherda, Don Cossacks, Expansion of Russia 1500–1800. In the early 1550s Dmitro Vyshnevetsky, a Ruthenian noble and Cossack hetman began building forts at the mouth of the Dnieper, to close the trail from Crimea to Ukraine and Poland, on the island of Kortitsa near Konskaya Boda and the Crimean nomads a fortress was built, which gave rise to the Zaporizhian Sich composed of Cossacks living on the lower Dnieper beyond the rapids. Polish King Sigismund II Augustus assigned Vyshnevetsky the duty of protecting the Polish and Ukrainian lands from Crimean Tatar raids. Polish resistance might have become significant, but it was vitiated by the Komelnitsky uprising and the ruin Ukrainian history. In folk culture The numerous raids and abduction of captives left a deep imprint on popular culture. In Ukrainian ballads and tales, one of the main themes is Turkish slavery. Slaves. Slaves lament. Marusia Bohuslavka, Ivan Bogoslavets, Falcon, Flight of the Three Brothers from Azov, or the release from bondage and safe return to the homeland, Samoylo the Cat, Alexei Popovich, Adaman Matyas the Old, The Dnieper Talks to the Danube. Topic: <laughs> Historians on the Tatar raids. Vasily Kliuchevsky, during the 16th century, year after year, thousands of people on the borderland vanished from their fatherland, and tens of thousands of the best people in the country set off for the southern border to protect the inhabitants of the central provinces from captivity and ruin. If you consider how much time and spiritual and material strength was wasted in the monotonous, brutal, toilsome and painful pursuit of these wily steppe predators, one need not ask what people in Eastern Europe were doing while those of Western Europe advanced in industry and commerce, in civil life and in the arts and sciences. <laughs> List of raids Outline This section is translated from the Russian Wikipedia October 2018 for 1480 to 1648, 2014 for the rest. Additions to the English version are in italics, when needed. The main theme is the slow southward and eastward expansion of Slavic population. See Expansion of Russia 1500 to 1800. It should be noted that raids really began with the Mongol conquest, so this list could be expanded to the previous 240 years. In the first period, before 1648, we are dealing mostly with raids and defensive measures. Before 1507 raids were into the Polish-Ukraine extending as far as Belarus. After 1507 raiding into the Ukraine continued but most raids were in the region south of Moscow. There was a tendency for population, fortifications and raiding to shift south from Moscow and east from the Polish-Ukrainian area. 
After 1648 we are dealing with large armies, Tatars, Turks, Poles, Russians and large numbers of Ukrainian Cossacks. Most fighting was in the western Ukraine the right bank. This drove the Slavic population to the left bank and probably allowed Russian population to expand southward north of Ukraine. Fighting weakened the Polish Commonwealth, but Russia continued to grow southward until it annexed Crimea in 1783. Note that this list does not include raids before 1480, raids further east, most Cossack raids on Crimea and petty raiding between different groups of Nogay, which was considerable. The main underlying theme of the period is the southward expansion of Russian population and the eastward expansion of Ukrainian population. If we had population figures for this the history of the period would be much clearer. Topic. 1480–1506 Western Ukraine as far as Kiev was held by the Grand Duchy of Lithuania which was in dynastic union with Poland. Its settled areas can be guessed from the raid maps. Eastern Ukraine was held by the Great Horde, the steppe remnant of the Golden Horde. The Principality of Moldavia became an Ottoman vassal in 1498. Russia was often at war with Lithuania Muscovite -Lithuanian wars. Russia was allied with Crimea C so Crimean raids were directed to Lithuania. In 1480 Russia became independent of the Horde. In 1485 the Ottomans gained control to the Black Sea and made Crimea a vassal. From 1500 Crimean raids penetrated deep into modern Belarus. In 1502 the Great Horde ended, removing the buffer between Crimea and Russia and bringing the nomads under increasing Crimean control as the Nogai Horde. In 1507 the Crimeans and Nogay began raiding Russia. 1480, Mungli Guri raids Podolia. The raid made it difficult for Poland to support the Horde, contributing to the Great Stand on the Ugra River and Russian independence from the Horde. 1482, Mungli's troops destroy Kiev, burn the castle, loot churches and take many captives including the Voyevod and his family. 1485–87, each year Tatars invade the southern lands of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and devastate Podolia. In September 1487 the Polish Crown Prince defeats a 5,000-man Tatar Zagan near the village of Kapersten in Podolia, killing 1,500 and taking many prisoners. 1488, after a winter roaming in Podolia, in summer they join the Turks to invade Ukraine. The king sent the Crown Prince and the Polish militia against the Tatars. They hold the border and keep the Tatars from entering Galicia. 1489, raid on Podolia, 100,000 man Tatar horde attacks southern Lithuanian lands and devastates Kiev Vojvodstivio. Kiev again taken by storm and ravaged and burned. 1490, Trans Volga and Crimean Tatars attack the Polish Lithuanian domains. The Volhynian Voivodeship and Ruthenian Voivodeship are strongly devastated. Some bands reach the outskirts of Lublin. Tatars ravage Volhynia, loot and burn Volodymyr Volinsky and many other towns and villages and take a huge number of captives. On 25 January 1491 the returning Tatars are suddenly overtaken near Izyaslav, Ukraine on the Horan River by the united Polish-Lithuanian forces under Lvov Kostelan Nicholas of Horch and the Lutsik starist Semyon Olshansky. They defeat a 9,000-man Tatar Zagan and recapture all the prisoners. Tatars suffer heavy casualties. 1493, Mungli launches a spring attack on the southern Lithuanian lands. They move on Kiev but are stopped by heavy flooding on the Dnieper. Separate bands raid the southern Lithuanian borders ruining the Kiev, Bratslav and Chernagov lands. In the same year Mungli Guri twice, sat on his horse, and personally led attacks on Lithuania. 1494, in autumn the Crimean Horde devastated Podolia and Volhynia and took a huge number of captives and much booty. The pursuing Polish-Lithuanian army was defeated at Vishnevitz and the Tatars returned to the steppe with their captives. 1495, Tatars under the son of Mungli Gure attack Volhynia. Prince magnate Semyon Olshansky, the starist of Lutsik and marshal of Volhynia, gathers the local gentry militia and defeated the Tatars besieging Koritz. Later Mungli organized a second raid on the Lithuanian border. A large horde under his sons devastate Volhynia. 
The Polish Lithuanians took refuge in Rovno, Olshansky, the namestnik of Vladimir Vasily Reptovich, Princes Constantine and Michael Ostrzyski, the Volhynian boyars, and their followers. The Crimeans besieged the Rovno castle, a sortie failed, the town was looted and burned, but the Tatars were unable to take the castle. 1496, in winter, a huge horde led by the Crimean crown prince devastated Volhynia. They completely destroyed some Volhynian districts as well as some on the Polish border and safely returned to the steppes. In spring of the next year sick, they continued to raid the Lithuanian lands, looting, killing and taking captive the defenseless population. In March they burst into Volhynia and devastated the area around Kremenes. The Lithuanian magnate Michael Ostrzyski gathered his followers and set out after the withdrawing Tatars. At a battle near Pallone he routed the Tatars and freed all the prisoners. Other Tatar bands were defeated in the Kievan Polesia and the Bratslav region. 1497, in summer they invaded Lithuania, devastated the area around Mozir and Oliva. Ru, Oliva Kievska Oblast and took many prisoners. Princes Michael and Konstantin Ostrzyski and their men went after them. They defeated the Tatars on the Soroka River near Bratslav and all the prisoners were released. Among the 340 Tatars killed was Crown Prince Akmal, 1498, in spring 100,000 Turkish Moldavian troops sick, see Polish -Ottoman War 1485-1503 invade southern Poland-Lithuania. Meeting no resistance they devastated Galicia. Shemizel, Jaroslaw and Perevorsk were taken by storm and destroyed. The Poles defended Lvov but the surrounding area is burned and ravaged. A terrible panic swept the whole of Poland. John I Albert called up the gentry militia which arrived at Lvov after the Turks withdrew. When the militia disbanded the Crimeans ravaged Podolia and Galicia without meeting resistance. 1499, the Crimeans campaigned along the Lithuanian border. In the summer they ravaged the land around Bels and made some raids on Podolia and the Bratslav region. 1500, the Kievan, Volhynian, Chelm and Bels lands are ravaged. Grand Prince Ivan III asked his ally the Crimean Khan to raid Slutsk, Pinsk, Tarov and Minsk i.e. Belarus, but not to raid Severia i.e. Chernikov. For, by the grace of God, these cities and lands are now ours. In the spring of 1500 Mungli Garay's sons raid the Kiev and Volhynian regions. Some bands reach the Bels and Chelm regions and up to the river Vistula. The Polish king and militia moved against them, but the Tatars got home safely with many captives. In autumn the Russians and Crimeans decided to attack Kiev and gathered a 15,000-man army. Without waiting for Moscow Mungli sent a horde under his sons to the southern lands of Poland-Lithuania. They devastated the lands around Bratslav, Volhynia, Berestushchinu, Brest, Belarus, Bels, Lvov, Chelm, Lublin and Sandomierz. They stormed and burned Chemilnik, Kremenes, Lvov, Bels, Chelm, Krasnostaw, Lublin and other towns and took captive 50,000 people. The Polish militia was called up, but the Tatars were able to return to the steppe, 1502-1. In summer Mungli Garay organized a new campaign into Poland-Lithuania. Ivan III suggested that he attack along the Pripyat River but the Khan wrote back that he had already told his sons to go to Kiev and Volhynia, even to Vilna and Trakai. A 30,000-man horde under his sons devastated the regions of Galicia, Lublin and Sandomierz. They took many captives and returned with impunity. 2. In autumn the Tatars began to ravage Polesia. The Grand Duke called on Prince Semyon Slutsky and sent him the Podolian voivod Jan Bashatsky, Russian-Lithuanian gentry and a group of Austrian mercenaries. They defeated the Tatars 1500 men on the Usha River near Babruisk, 3. That fall Lithuanian princes Fedor Yaroslavich Kletsky, Yuri Dubrovitsky and Gregory Glinsky tried to block the withdrawing Tatars on the Usha River beyond Ovrich. The Tatars won and killed Glinsky, 4. In August, sequence, 6,000 Tatars under Prince Bidi Garay invade Belarusian Polesia. They besiege Slutsk and raid the surrounding area, killing and taking captives. They devastate the region of Slutsk and Kapil. Semyon Slutsky and a small garrison take refuge in the citadel and send word to Grand Duke Alexander at Vilna. Tatars split into detachments and ravage the surrounding area including Nyasvij. Kletsk is stormed, ravaged and burned. Tatars reach the outskirts of Novogradok and turn back. They burn many villages and then, with much booty and many captives, concentrate near Slutsk and return to the steppe. 
Alexander sends his nobles to aid Slutsky but they return to Vilna on learning that the Tatars had left. 1503, a 3,000-man Tatar force devastated the area of Slutsk and Novogradok, and then moved to the David Herodok. The Lithuanian nobles Stanislaw Kiska the highest Lithuanian hetman, Albrecht Gashtold and Yuri Namirovich joined Prince Semyon Slutsky, chased the Tatars, caught up with them beyond Herodok, defeated them, freed the prisoners and returned with much honor and booty. At the same time other Tatar bands raided around Kiev. They also made a major incursion deep into Lithuania. The Tatars first invaded the Chernikov region, but the Muscovite Voivod sent them back across the Dnieper, into the Lithuanian lands. They were active in Belarusian Polesia near Slutsk and Novogradok. They also ravaged Podolia, 1505-1. Attack on Slutsk, Nezvizh, and Kletsk. A huge Crimean Tatar horde under the sons of Mungli Gure, the future Mehmed I Guri, Bidi, Feta, Guri and Bernash Guri entered Belarus, devastated the neighborhood of Minsk, Novogradok, Polotsk and Vitebsk. 2. Second Campaign, in 1505 a horde under the same three princes invaded Lithuania. They crossed the Dnieper near Loyu and moved deep into the Grand Duchy. Mehmed with the main force went to Minsk and sent his younger brothers to Slutsk, 2a. Mehmed besieged Minsk, burnt the town but could not take the citadel. They ravaged the area of Vilna, Vitebsk, Polotsk and Drutsk taking a huge number of prisoners and booty. He then withdrew unhindered with his prisoners and booty to the Kiev region and then to the steppes. 2b. The younger princes Bidi Garai and Bernash Garai approached Slutsk which was held by the widow of Semyon Slutsky. After ravaging the countryside, losing many men and failing to take the town the two Tatar princes moved on to Novogradok. Here there was a large meeting of Lithuanian magnates Vilna Bishop Wojciech Tabor, Vilna Voivod Nicholas Rodzivil, Jamudski Starost Stanislav Kezgalo, Polotsk Voivod Stanislav Glebovich, Trakai Voivod Jan Zabrzinski, Grand Hetman of Lithuania and Namistnik of Smolensk Stanislaw Kiska, all enemies of the future rebel Michael Glinski. Since they had come without soldiers, they fled on learning of the Tatar approach. The Tatars chased them beyond the Neman River, did great damage in central Lithuania and returned to Novogradok with much booty and captives. Meanwhile the Crimeans had besieged Novogradok which was held by Albrecht Gashtold. After suffering heavy losses, the Crimeans raised the siege and retreated. Passing Slutsk and Petrikov they returned to the steppes with many captives and much booty. 1506. In summer an army under the princes Bidi Guri and Bernash Guri attacked deep into the Grand Duchy. They crossed the Pripyat River and ravaged the nearby districts. In August the Lithuanian army 7,000 men under Prince Magnate Michael Glinsky shattered a Tatar horde 20,000 men under Feta Sik Guri and Bernash Guri. At this time the ailing Polish king and Grand Duke of Lithuania, Alexander Jagiellon reached Lithuania and called a Sejm at Lita the Tatars devastate the area around Slutsk and Novogradok and sent raiding parties to Lita, Ashmiani, Kreva, Vaukovishk and Grodno, burning and taking prisoners. When the Tatars approached the ailing king was taken from Lita to Vilna but the great magnates stayed at Lita. The Crimean Tatars were raiding from Lita to Novogradok, burning churches, villages and estates, killing and taking prisoners. The Lithuanian magnates gathered a 10,000-man army at Lita and moved on Novogradok which they reached on 1 August. Pans Yuri and Andrei Nimirovich captured six Tatars who under interrogation reported that the Tatars were a Kletsik. Under the command of Grand Hetman Stanislav Klishka, on 4 August they left Novogorodok for Kletsk, destroying Tatar raiding parties along the way. Klishka became ill and was replaced by Michael Glinsky. On 6 August, at the Battle of Kletsk the superior forces of the Horde were shattered, 27,000 were killed or drowned, 3,000 were taken captive and 40,000 prisoners were freed. The retreating Tatars were pursued, killed and captured. Forces of Slutsky's widow, Slutskoy Nyagini Anastasii, smashed the remains of the Tatar army at Kapil and Petrovich location. Glinsky made a ceremonial entry into Kletsk, leading many Tatar prisoners. Also in this year other Tatar bands devastated Podolia and Galicia. 1507, the first Crimean raid on Muscovy. Topic: 1507-1570. By this time Moscow had control of lands along the Lithuanian border from Kaluga southwest to around Chernagov across current Ukrainian border. 
Many Tatar raids were in this area, but most were just south of the Oka River bank fortification line from Kaluga to Riazan. The raided area probably corresponds to the edge of settlement. In 1521 the Crimeans crossed the Oka and pillaged the area around Moscow. In 1533-66 the Abatis defense line was built south of the Oka. The Livonian War 1558 diverted troops from the Oka and contributed to the Great Raid on Moscow in 1571. Russia took Smolensk 1514, Kazan 1552, and Astrakhan 1556. Rulers were Vasily III 1502 Regency, Ivan the Terrible 1547 1584. Raids on Lithuania continued, but we no longer hear of many deep penetrations beyond the current Ukrainian border. In 1514-21, during the Fourth Muscovite-Lithuanian War, Lithuanian troops supported the Tatar raids, including the Great Raid on Moscow. In 1569 the Ukrainian area was formally transferred from the Lithuanian to the Polish half of the Commonwealth. In the far south, in 1557 the Crimeans besieged the Zaporozhian Cossacks and two years later Cossacks and Russians made a small raid on Crimea. 1507, first Crimean raid on Russia, near Belayov and Kazels. Troops under I. Kolmsky Kashi, Vasily Odoyevsky, Ivan Vortoinsky and other princes defeated the Tatars on the Oka and recaptured the prisoners and booty. 1508, in October Crimean Tatars entered Lithuania and began to ravage Belarusian Polesia. Grand Hetman Konstanty Ostrogsky led his troops from Smolensk and defeated the main enemy force near Slutsk. 1509, a large Crimean horde devastates Galicia. Grand Lithuanian Hetman Ostrogsky and Grand Crown Hetman Mikolaj Kamenicki were successful against several raiding parties. 1510-1. In autumn the sons of Mungli Guri led a 50,000-man horde into the Grand Duchy. The Polish Lithuanians expected them in Podolia, but they changed direction, crossed the Dnieper near Kiev, devastated Lithuania without opposition, and reached the outskirts of Vilna, too. When the Khan made a second raid, Hetman Ostrogsky concentrated near Petrikov in Polesia. Learning of this, the Crimeans did not go beyond Kiev, but ravaged the surrounding country. Prince Yuri Slutsky and Kiev voivod Andrei Nemirovich went after them and near Rutno, location, killed about 8,000. 1511-1. Prince Ahmed Guri son of Mungli, attacked Riazan. The town was not taken, but the surrounding country was devastated. The Tatars almost broke through to the Oka River, too. In early 1511 sick, perhaps 1512, Mungli Guri and 40,000 men devastated Podolia and Volhynia, with some bands almost reaching Krakow. Lithuanian Grand Hetman Ostrogsky boldly attacked with a small force. He was joined by Michael Vishnevetsky, Andrei Zibarovsky, Alexander Zartoriski and, from Lithuania, Grodno starist Jerzy Rodjivil and Slonim starist Jan Rodjivil, altogether about 3,000 troops under Ostrogsky. They were soon joined by 3,000 more from Podolia under Crown Grand Hetman Mikolaj Kamenicki. Mungli was camped near Vishnevets and sent raiding parties to the surrounding area, looting, killing and taking captives. On 28 April 1512 sick, the combined forces defeated the Crimeans at Vishnevets. Some sources say the Tatars lost 24,000 men. 1,512-1. Mingli Guri's sons plundered Balayov. There was a new raid on Riazan with many captives. 2. In May princes Akhmet Guri and Bernash Guri with large forces attacked the southern Russian border and devastated the areas around Balayov, Odoyev, Voritinsk 17 km SW of Kaluga and Alexan. Grand Prince Vasily III of Russia sent troops to the Oka and Ugra River and strengthened the garrisons of Serpikov, Kashira, Kolomna, Tarusa and Riazan, but he kept them on the Oka, allowing the Tatars to ravage the area south of the river and carry away a huge number of captives. The Voivods did not dare pursue the retreating Tatars. 3. In June Akhmet Guri made a new attack on the Muscovite border. He invaded Severia and devastated the land around Putivol, Starodub, and Bryansk. 4. In July the Kalga Sultan possibly the future Mehmed I Guri moved toward the Riazan region. Russian troops were placed on the Upa River Tula and the Osyotr River Zaresk. The raid was blocked by the timely arrival of troops and he only managed to raid the outskirts of the Riazan region. 
The Voivods pursued him as far as the Don River and Tikaya Sosna River about 320 km south of Ryazan near Voronezh, but were unable to catch him. 5. On 6 October Bernash Guri suddenly attacked Ryazan. He captured the fort and looted the suburbs but was unable to defeat the garrison. Three days later the Tatars left for the steppe with many captives. 6. Also in this year Ostrogsky raided Severia and defeated a 6,000-man Russian force. 1513, in June they again devastated the surroundings of Bryansk, Putivil and Starodov and retreated to the steppe. 1514-1. Raid to the southern Lithuanian borders. 2. In autumn Kalga Muhammad Guri led a large foray into Severia. Along with the Tatars were the Polish king's voivods with men, cannon and arquebuses. See Muscovite Lithuanian Wars hashtag Fourth War 1512-1522. Local princes Vasily Ivanovich Shemyachich and Vasily of Starodub, both Moscow vassals, repelled the attack. 1515-1. Raid by Ayga Mirza and Andish Mirza on Mesheria Kazimov. 2. In March Kalga Sultan Mehmed I Guri raided the Severian borderlands along with the Kiev Voivod Andrei Nemirovich and the Starist of Kanov Ostap Dashkovich. The Tatar Lithuanian army unsuccessfully besieged Chernikov, Novorod Siversky, and Starodub and then retreated, taking many captives. According to Polish sources, the prisoners numbered 60 or even 100,000. 1516 to 1. Two campaigns in June and September on Ryazan and Meshersk lands, the capture of a large number of prisoners. In June 1516, Prince Bogatyr Guri, the eldest son of the new Khan Mehmed I Guri and who in 1523 was briefly Khan of Astrakhan, raided Ryazan and Mesheria The Russian voivod did not expect the attack. 2. In the summer of 1516 the Crimean Horde undertook a new attack on the southern Polish-Lithuanian lands. Tatar raiding parties devastated Galicia, Podolia and Volhynia. Having learned that Grand Lithuanian Hetman Konstanty Ostrogsky was gathering forces to repel the enemy attack, the Crimean Tatars hastily retreated to the steppes. 1516, year label repeated. Up to 60,000 men under Ali Aslan fell on southern Lithuania, thereby foiling a campaign of Sigismund I the Old to retake Smolensk. 1517-1. 20,000 men under Tokuzik Mirza reach Tula, where they are completely defeated by the Russians under Vasily Odoyevsky and Ivan Voratinsky. Only 5,000 get back to Crimea. On foot, naked and barefoot. 2. In November they raid Severia but are defeated on the Sula River about 200 km east of Kiev by Prince Vasily Ivanovich Shemyachich of Russia. 1519, in June, Kalga Sultan Bogatyr Guri raids southern Poland Lithuania. They ravage the area around Bels and Lublin, and then move to Volhynia. Grand Hetman Konstanty Ostrogsky gathered about 2,000 soldiers and was joined by about 4,000 Poles under Mikolaj Kamenicki sick in Rue, probably error, and Mikolaj Ferlay. Bogatyr Guri placed his camp near the fortress of Sokol. On 2 August 1519 at the Battle of Sokol the Polish-Lithuanian army was utterly destroyed by the Crimean Horde. 1521, in the summer of 1521 the Crimean Khan Mehmed I Guri led a huge Tatar horde on a major attack on Russia. With him were Nogay and Lithuanian troops under the Kniv starist Ostap Dashkovich. Some sources say that there were up to 100,000 men. Using the Moravsky Trail between the headwaters of the Vorskla and Donets, they reached the Bystreya Sosna River, bypassed Tula and turned east toward Ryazan. The Khan then turned west and on 28 July 1521 approached the Oka River near Kolomna, where no one was expecting him and there crossed it. Russian troops sent from Serpikov and Kashira were individually broken by superior Tatar forces. Killed were Voivods Ivan A. Sheremetev, Prince Vladimir Kurbsky, and Jacob and Yuri Zamyatini. Prince Fedor Lopata Obolensky was captured. After the battles the remaining Voivods withdrew their troops into fortified cities. The Crimeans and Nogay then began to ravage the Kalamna region with impunity. Mehmed Guri was awaiting the arrival of his younger brother, the Khan of Kazan Sahib I Guri. Sahib Guri broke through the eastern border, destroyed the cities of Nizhny Novgorod and Vladimir, joined his elder brother at Kalamna, and the combined forces headed for Moscow. 
Grand Prince of Moscow Vasily III Ivanovich hastily left the capital for Volokolamsk to gather troops. On 1 August the Crimean Kazan army appeared near Moscow, but they were in no hurry to besiege the well-fortified city. Mehmed Guri camped on the river Severka, about 60 km from the capital and placed military operations near Moscow under his eldest son, the Kalga Bogatyr Guri, who was later briefly Khan of Astrakhan. The Crimean and Kazan Tatars spread out widely through the central areas of the Russian state and spent two weeks looting, killing and taking captives. Meanwhile, the Grand Prince had gathered a large army at Volokolamsk and ordered his voivods to advance from Serpikov. Given this, Mohamed Guri decided to withdraw the 12th of August. They ravaged Kolomna and moved toward Ryazan. On the advice of Dashkovich the Khan besieged the city, but the Russian garrison under I. V. Kabar Simsky bravely repulsed all enemy attacks. Unable to take the city, the Khan headed south with a huge number of prisoners. The invasion brought heavy damage to the Russian state, ruining the areas of Nizhny Novgorod, Vladimir, Kolomna, Kashira, Borosk between Moscow and Kaluga, Ryazan and even the outskirts of Moscow. According to the Ostrishki chronicler Mohamed Guri, took more than 300,000 captives from Moscow." Sigismund von Herberstein wrote that the Crimean Khan "...took with him from Muscovy so many prisoners, it seems unbelievable. For they say that their number exceeded 800,000. He sold part of them to the Turks at Kaffa, others he slaughtered, such as the elderly and the infirm, who could not be sold for a good price and were unfit for labor." These they gave to the young men like rabbits to hunting dogs for their first military practice. Those who were sold had to serve as slaves for six years, after which they became free, but could not leave the country. The Kazan Tatars also took many captives. The Kazan Khan sold all the Muscovite captives at the market at Astrakhan which is located not far from the mouth of the Volga." 1524-1 the new Crimean Khan Sadat I Guri organized a new attack on Poland Lithuania. Supported by the Turks, they twice devastated Podolia and Volhynia. Two. Also in 1524, Grand Hetman Konstanty Ostrogsky and Cherkasy Starost Ostap Dashkovich led a 40,000 man Lithuanian army to Ochakov on the Black Sea. They besieged it for two days and then took it by storm. 1527 1. In the winter of 1526-27 the Crimean Khan led a 30,000-man horde to devastate Galicia and Volhynia. Grand Hetman Ostrogsky along with Jerzy Rodjivil and Albertus Gostautas set out from Vilna. Near Pinsk Ostrogsky defeated a large raiding party and moved on toward Kiev. On the way he was joined by Prince Yuri Slutsky, Fyodor Sangushko, Ivan and Alexander Vishnevetsky, Alexander Chartorsky, Kiev Voivod Andrei Namirovich and Cherkasy Staris Dashkovich. At this time the horde was slowly moving from the Kiev region to Crimea burdened with much loot and captives. On 27 January 1527 the Lithuanians caught up with them on the Olshanitsa River near Kiev. In the ensuing Battle of Olshanitsa, the Tatars were defeated and suffered many casualties. Among those killed were Turks led by Ibrahim, the Pasha of Perikop In autumn Prince Islam Garai led 40,000 men to the South Russian borders. Moscow, Kolomna and other cities were in a state of siege for five days sick. On 9 September Islam Garai tried to cross the Oka but was blocked by Voivods F. V. Lopata Obolinsky and I. F. Avchina Telepnev Obolinsky. After a long battle Islam Garai returned to the steppe. This time the Russians not only held the Oka bank but sent troops beyond the Oka. The big Voivods stood on the Oka and cavalry of the light Voivods pursued the enemy. The Voivods caught up with and defeated the Crimeans at Zaraysk on the Osyotr River. The campaign of Islam Guri ended in complete failure and the Voivods chased him as far as the Don Sik. The headwaters of the Don are about 60 km southeast of Tula. 1531, Khan Sadat Guri leads a large raid on Cherkasy. The defense was led by Kanev and Cherkasy Starist Dashkovich. After this the Ukrainian Cossacks proposed to the same that they become guards of the southern border. 1532, more raids on the Muscovite border. In February Tatars under Prince Buchik Guri devastated the area around Odoyev and Tula. Voivods Ivan Voratinsky, Ivan Avchina Telepnyov Obolinsky and Ivan Lyaski could not stop the raids. 
1533, in August Princes Islam Ghari and Safa Ghari the exiled Safa Ghari of Kazan and 40,000 men invade the southern border. Vasily III was warned in time and sent advanced troops to Kalamna and himself took the main force to the village of Kolomenskoy. Meanwhile the princes were besieging Ryazan and tried to storm it. Other detachments raided the surrounding countryside, burning villages and taking prisoners. The Grand Prince sent his main voivods against the Tatars and sent his light cavalry voivods. Princes Ivan Ovchina Obolinsky, Dmitry Poletsky and Ivan Drutsky, against the Tatar horsemen. On the approach of the Russians the Tatars began a hasty retreat. The light cavalry voivods had much success against Tatar bands that had become separated from the main force. Despite this the Ryazan lands were devastated and the Crimeans carried away a huge number of captives. 1534, in May the Azov and Crimean Tatars raided the outskirts of Ryazan. They were defeated on the Pranya River and 50 prisoners were sent to Moscow. 1535-1. In fall Tatar troops attack Severia. Crimeans fought near Putovil, Rilske, Novgorod Seversky, Starodub, Chernikov, Pachep and Gomel. 2. Raids of Crimean Tatars under the Chamash Mirza near Ryazan ended with the destruction of a 15,000-man horde. 1535, year label repeated in Russian wiki new raids on the Muscovite lands 1536, in spring and summer Crimean and Azov Tatars made small raids around Balayov and Ryazan 1537, raids around Tula and Odoyev. Prince Vasily Variga Volkonsky killed. 1539, in October Prince Iman Guri raided the southern areas and ravaged the Kashira area. Despite the success of Prince S. I. Mikulinsky, who defeated several raiding parties and took captives, the Crimeans were able to capture many prisoners. 1541, in July Sahib I. Guri invaded the southern Russian lands and burned the outskirts of Zaraysk. After a defeat on the Oka the Tatars withdrew to Pronsk. Moscow voivods chased them from Pronsk to the Don. Prince Iman Guri separated from the main force and began raiding around Odoyev. Voivod Prince V. I. Voratiansky and his brothers left the town and defeated them. Forty-five prisoners were taken to Moscow for questioning, Yazikov 1542-1. In March, Prince Iman Guri invaded Severia and ravaged the area around Putovel, Starodub and Novgorod Seversky. Point two. In August the Tatars fought around Ryazan. 1544, in December Prince Iman Guri burned the neighborhood of Balayov and Odoyev, taking many prisoners. 1547 to 5000 Crimeans and Nogay under Kasse Mirza pillaged the Ryazan land to the Voza River. 1548, Voivod Mikhail Voronov repulsed the attack of the Crimean Tatars near Meshera 1550, in August 30,000 Tatars attacked Ryazan and Meshera. Prince S. I. Mikulinsky took the field. They chose not to fight and returned to the steppe. In December the Crimean Tatars and Nogay again attacked the Ryazan region, Meshera and Old Ryazan. 1551, Nogay raid Ryazan. 1552, the new Khan Devlet I. Guri made his first foray into Russia. He was trying to disrupt a Russian attack on Kazan, Siege of Kazan. In July he tried to take Tula by storm, but failed. Ivan the Terrible sent a large force from Kalamna. The retreating Tatars were thoroughly defeated. 1,555 to 60,000 men under Devlet Guri raid southern Russia and are defeated at the Battle of Sudbashensky. Devlet Guri lost two sons, Kalga Ahmed Guri and Haji Guri. 1557, in May, the Crimeans besieged Kortitsa for three weeks. Devlet Guri was unable to take it by storm and suffered heavy casualties. The defense of the fortress was led by Prince Dmitro Vaishnavetsky. Seeking help and support, Vaishnavetsky was quick to announce the victory to the Russian government but Ivan the Terrible showed no interest because he was preparing for the Livonian War. Vishnevetsky evacuated Koritsa, handed over Cherkasy and Kandiv to the Lithuanian authorities, and entered the Russian service. 1,558-20,000 Tatars attacked the Bratslav Voivodeship Eastern Podolia, Volhynia and Podolia. They took 40,000 captives and returned to Perikop without difficulty. 2. In January 1558 Devlet Guri sent 100,000 men north under Kalga Muhammad Guri to the Mecca River roughly between Zaraysk and Riazan, intending to attack Tula, Kashira and Riazan. 
Learning of the timely advance of the Russian army, the Tatars turned back. The few Russian troops that went after them could not catch them. 1559, the Russian government allocated five regiments to protect the southern border, but a 3,000-man raiding party broke into the Tula region. Other Crimean troops fought near Pronsk where they were defeated. 2. An 8,000-man Russian army under Daniel Adeshev was sent to work the Crimean tribes. Pramizlati Krimsky Uluzi. Prince Dmitry Vishnevetsky and 5,000 men were joined on the Lower Don by other Russian troops under Royal Posselnik. Igmati Veshnyakov. On the Adar River, about halfway between Stalingrad and the Dnieper, Vishnevetsky and Michael Cherkasenin's Cossacks defeated a Tatar detachment which was going to Kazan. Sick. Adashev sailed down the Dnieper River to the Black Sea and captured two Turkish ships. The appearance of a Russian flotilla caught the Crimean Khan unawares. Adashev landed on the west coast of Crimea, defeated cavalry sent against him, freed a number of Russian and Lithuanian prisoners and returned safely to Monastery Island. 1560, the Crimean Mirza Divi invaded Severia and besieged Rilske. The Crimeans ravaged the surrounding area, but could not take the city by storm. The Russian garrison held off all enemy assaults. In August Divi Mirza with 3,000 men broke through the Patezhny forest which ran between Tula and Zaraysk on the left bank of the Osetra River. The Russian voivods overtook Tatars on the Don, but Divi Mirza ordered the slaughter of his captives and was able to break away from pursuit. At the same time a 20,000-man Tatar horde roamed near the Russian borderland. 1561, a group of Budzak Tatars raided Severia. 1562, at the request of Sigismund II Augustus see Livonian War, in July, 15,000 men under Devlet Guri ravaged the areas around Mt. Sensk, Odoyev, Novosol, Bolkov, Chern 30 km nay of Mt. Sensk on the road to Tula and Belayov taking many captives. A. and M. Voratinsky went after them, reached Kolomak west of Kharkiv, but could not catch them. 1563, Princes Muhammad Guri and Adil Guri with 10,000 men fall on Mikhailov. Tatar troops were also in the Dedilovo, 30 km se of Tula, Pronsk and Ryazan areas. 1564, knowing that the main Russian forces were at Kaluga awaiting a Polish attack, in fall Khan Devlet I Guri, his two sons and 60,000 men attacked the Ryazan borderland. For three or four days the horde tried to storm Ryazan. Voivod Alexei Danilovich Bismanov and his son Fyodor fought off attacks on Ryazan, but the Tatars seriously ravaged the areas between Pronsk and Ryazan, capturing a great many inhabitants. After spending six days in the Ryazan country the Crimean Khan retreated to the steppes. Later, one of the Tatar detachments about 4, men under Shurin Prince Mame returned to the Ryazan country but was destroyed by the troops of Bismanov and Prince Fyodor Tatov. The majority of the Tatars were killed but 500 of them along with their commander were captured. 1565, in fall Devlet Guri made his usual raid into the southern Russian lands and surrounded and besieged Bolkov. Princes Andrew Telyatevsky and Dmitry Havoristinin were sent to aid the beleaguered garrison. Upon learning of the approach of fresh Russian forces Devlet Guri left Bolkov for the steppe, the 9th of October. 1566, the Russian government completed the construction of a large defense line, the Zasiknaya Cherta, a grand fortified line, which ran from Ryazan to Tula and then to Balayov on the upper Oka. Ivan the Terrible spent a month inspecting the new forts at Kazels, Balayov, Bolkov, Alex and other border towns. 1567, in spring a 3,000-man party under Osman Mirza of the Shuran clan pillaged the Muscovite borderlands. 1568, in autumn 3,000 men under princes Adil Guri and Ghazi Guri the future Khan Ghazi II Guri pillaged the Muscovite borderlands. 1569, Khan Devlet Guri joins Turks in their unsuccessful attempt to take Astrakhan see Russo-Turkish War 1568-1570. 1570, in spring 50,000 men under the future Khan Mehmed II Guri devastate the neighborhood of Ryazan and Kashira. On May 21 at Zaraysk voivods Dmitry Havoristinin and Prince Fyodor Lvov attack the Tatars at night and take many captives. In autumn 6,000 7,000 Tatars under Crown Prince Alp Guri fought around Novosol. With them were Nogay and Azov people. Topic 1571-1599 
In this period the Oka was crossed four times, in 1571 and 1584 by bypassing the main line west of Kaluga. In 1571 Moscow was burned but the other two raids on Moscow failed. Main raiding continued to be south of the Oka bank line from Kaluga to Ryazan and from Kaluga south toward Bolkov, with some tendency to move southward. We also hear of raids much further south and east. The effect of the new Abatis line, roughly from Ryazan through Tula to Balayov, is not clear from this list. Raids on Poland-Lithuania are only mentioned for 1577, but this may be an omission. 1571, Moscow burned, more than 30 cities looted, about 60,000 captives. See also Fire of Moscow 1571. In spring occurred one of the worst Tatar invasions of Muscovy. Crimean Khan Devlet I Guri, learning from prisoners and deserters of the problems of the Moscow state, plague and drought, the continuing Livonian War, the concentration of Russian forces only on the Oka River fords at Kolomna and Serpikov, launched his most successful campaign against Russia. The Khan originally planned confine himself to a raid near Kazels west of the north flowing part of the Oka and led his horde to the headwaters of the Oka. Forcing this river at the Bystri ford, the horde moved toward Bolkov and Kazels. But on Zielinski Field location, he accepted the suggestion of a defector from Belayov, Boyar's son Kudyar Tishankov, to go straight to Moscow. The traitor promised to lead the horde through unprotected Paralaji on the upper Zizdra River, a place where the Crimeans had never been. This flanking maneuver was completely unexpected. In mid-May 40,000 Tatars crossed the Zizdra near Paramishal, and began bypassing the rear of the Russian troops and advanced on Moscow. Paramishal is roughly where the east-flowing Zizdra joins the north-flowing Oka. This implies that they were west of the Oka, moved north across the Zizdra and Ugra rivers and turned northeast to Moscow, bypassing Kaluga to the south. With a sudden attack they destroyed the troops of Kosh Voivod Yakov Volinsky. Ivan the Terrible, hearing of this dangerous breakthrough and the approaching enemy troops, fled from Serpikov past Moscow to Rostov, and planning to go further to Yaroslavl. Voivod's Prince I. D. Belsky, Prince I. F. M. S. T. Y. Slavsky, and Prince M. I. Voratinsky rapidly marched from Kolomna to Moscow, trying to get ahead of the Tatar horde and got there one day ahead of the Crimean Khan the 23rd of May. They placed themselves at the Zamoskvoresh the loop of the Moscow River across from the Kremlin and prepared for battle. After losing the first skirmishes the Khan camped at the village of Kolomenskoy just south of Moscow and sent 20,000 Tatars to burn the outlying parts of the city. The suburbs were burned along with the Earthen City, a historical region of Moscow. A great number of Muscovites died in the fire. Tatars began to plunder and ravage the Moscow district. On 25 May sick, this implies that they only stayed two days, Devlet Guri left Moscow for Kashira and Ryazan, sending out raiding parties to take captives. Soon, loaded with loot and a huge number of captives, the Crimeans returned to the steppes. On their way they passed through the Ryazan land and captured and burned Kashira. Prince Mikhail Vorotiansky with the forward regiment followed the retreating enemy, but because of the small number of troops could not prevent them from ravaging and destroying the Russian land. During this invasion 36 Russian cities were destroyed and many people taken captive. The Crimean ambassador to Lithuania later boasted that the Tatars had killed 60,000 people and taken the same number captive. 2. At the same time the Great Nogai Horde, as allies of the Crimeans, raided the Kazan areas of Tatushi and Alatyr. Tatushi is on the Volga south of Kazan. 1572, attack on Moscow fails, a second campaign with 120,000 men ends with a crushing defeat at the Battle of Molodai. In July Devlet Guri launched an even larger campaign with 120,000 men, according to the Chronicle. Other sources have 40,000 and other numbers, including Nogay and 7,000 Turkish Janissaries sick. The Khan had no doubt of victory and confidently divided Russian cities among his mirzas. Relying on his large army, he went straight for the main crossings of the Oka. On the night of 27 July the Tatar horse pushed aside a few Russian outposts and swam across the Senkini Ford location? On the following night they set off for Moscow on the Serpikov Road. The chief Russian voivod, Boyar Prince Mikhail Voratinsky, who was with a large force at Serpikov, left his position in the riverbank line and moved toward Moscow after the Tatars, cutting off their line of retreat. 
From the Kaluga western flank, trying to intercept the Tatars, was the vanguard regiment under A. P. Kovansky and D. I. Havorostinin and from Kashira, the guard regiment of I. P. Shusky, and V. I. Kolachev. On 30 July on the Rosheka River near the village of Molodai the vanguard regiment under princes Kovansky and Havorostinin caught up with the Tatar rearguard, attacked and defeated them. The Khan was alarmed by this blow from the Russian cavalry and halted his attack on Moscow. He sent a 12,000-man cavalry corps against Russian vanguard regiment. The vanguard regiment fell back, leading the enemy into the arms of a larger army which was just arriving and was strengthened by hastily constructed Goulier Gorods, pieces of wall on wheels. Under the cover of musket and cannon fire from Russian musketeers and German mercenaries behind the Goulier Gorods, Russian cavalry made sorties against the Tatars, throwing them into disorder. In one of these fights the prominent Tatar commander Divi Mirza was captured. Also killed was the Nogai Mirza Taraberdi who commanded the vanguard of the Crimean Horde. On 2 August Devlet Guri led his full force to storm the Goulier Gorods. During a fierce battle under the walls of these wooden forts a regiment under Mikhail Vorotinsky was able to slip around the enemy army and strike a powerful blow from the rear. At the same time the enemy was attacked from the Goulier Gorods by the vanguard regiment under Dmitry Havorostinin. Unable to withstand the double blow of Russian regiments, the Tatars retreated, having suffered enormous losses. Among the dead were the sons of the Devlet Guri. On the night of 3 August the horde hastily retreated southward, pursued by Russian cavalry. Trying to break away from pursuit, Devlet Guri put out several covering detachments, which were destroyed by Russians. Of the huge army that crossed the Russian border in July only 20,000 got back to Crimea. 1573, in September there was a raid by the Crimean princes on Ryazan. First they were fought by the borderland Voivods, and then by a large regiment from Serpikov under Voivod Prince S.D. Pronsky and his comrades. And they went to the Verda River, but did not touch the Tatars. 1574, in fall the Crimeans and Nogay raided the Ryazan borderland. Voyevod Prince Boris Serebryany and his comrades defeated the enemy at Petronikovsky Groves. 1576, in September the Crimean Tatars fell on Novgorod Seversky. 1577-1. A 10,000-man Crimean Tatar army under the new Khan Mehmed Semen Guri apparently Mehmed II Guri ravaged and burned Volhynia and received a large ransom from the Polish king for the termination of the campaign. On this raid they took 35,000 prisoners. 2. Crimean Tatars and Nogay continued to raid the southern Russian lands. At the head of the Tatar army was Yeseni Mirza Daiviv. The Nogay raided around Alatyr and Temnikov. 1578, Mirza Yeseni Daiviv made another raid. With him were 6,000 Kazavsev men under Kazi Mirza, 2,000 Azov men, 2,000 from the Great Nogay Horde and 2,000 Daiviv Nogay. In summer many Nogay were around Venyov and other places. 1580, in summer Nogay, Crimeans and Daiviv Nogay went to the Moscow borderland and there were many losses. Nogay Prince Uris, calling on the Cheremises to rebel, prepared to attack Meshera near Kazimov and the Ryazan region. 1581-25,000 Nogay under Prince Uris ravaged the Balayov, Alatyr and Kalamna areas, if correct, an unusually widespread together with the Great Horde was the Little Horde, Azov men and Crimeans. At their head were the Crimean princes and the famous Azov leader Dosmagmet. 1582, the Great Nogay assisted Cheremis rebels in the Kazan region and raided southern Russia. Their raid around Novosil is well known. 1583, Livonian War ends. 1584, in spring 52,000 Tatars led by Araslan Mirza broke through the Oka. For two weeks the Tatars and Nogay devastated the areas around Balayov, Kazels, Voritinsk just south of Kaluga, Meshosk south of Kaluga, Misals, Mazes, Dorogobuzh and Vyazma this implies that they had crossed the upper Oka and were west and north of Kaluga and carried into captivity countless many Russian people. On 7 May an army under Duma nobleman M. A. Beznan overtook the enemy at the mouth of the river Vys near Kaluga. In a bitter battle the Russians defeated the nomads and recaptured about 70,000 prisoners. Mirza Yeseni Daiviv with a separate detachment besieged city of Balayov which was defended by Prince Timothy Trubetskoy. 
Mikhail Beznin sent a force to help him and the Mirza raise the siege and fled to the steppe. Point two. Also in that year the Azov men under Dosmagmet Aga and Konkur Aga raided near Ryazk. 1585, two raids on the southern Russian lands. Tatar troops came to the Ryazan borderland. 1586 to 30,000 Tatars attacked the southern Russian territory. 1587 to 1. In spring Azov men and Lesser Nogay 3,000 men under Dosmagmet Aga made another raid on the southern Russian lands. 2. In June a 40,000 man horde under Princes Alp Guri and Selimit I Guri invaded Moscow lands by the Kalmius Trail. Russian voivods awaited the enemy near Tula, but the Crimeans stayed on the borderland and fell on the town of Kripivna, took the fort and burned the town. The Russian government sent a large army to the border under three commanders. On the approach of the Russians the Tatars hastily returned to the steppe. During pursuit the Russians overtook and destroyed many Tatar raiding parties but did not make contact with the main force. About 30,000 Crimeans and Nogay died and 2,000 were taken prisoner. 1591, attack on Moscow fails, in the summer of 1591 a huge Crimean Tatar horde, said to be 150,000 men, led by Khan Ghazi II Guri marched on the Russian realm. The first Tatar hordes were detected by Cossack Stanitsa heads near Livni. The Tula and Dedlai of Voivods reported to Moscow the appearance of hordes near the border. The Russian government took all measures to repel the enemy invasion. All the border voivods were ordered to quickly gather their troops near Serpikov, and then come to Moscow, leaving on the bank line a small detachment under S. Koltovsky for reconnaissance. On 3 July Koltovsky and his men arrived in Moscow, where he said that the Crimean Khan with a huge horde was moving directly on Moscow and not sending out raiding parties to capture prisoners. On 2 July Crimean cavalry crossed the Oka between Kashira and Serpikov and moved by the Moscow road toward the capital. The Khan, learning of the rapid withdrawal of the Russian troops toward Moscow and fearing a surprise attack held his forces together for a decisive battle. The Russian command decided to give a general battle under the walls of Moscow. At the head of the large Russian force gathered at the capital were Voivods Boyar Prince Fedor M. S. Toslavsky and cavalry Boyar Boris Godunov. The chief voivods tried to delay the offensive and sent to the Pakra River about 35 kilometers of Moscow picked troops under Prince Vladimir I Bakhtiar of Rostovsky. The small Russian detachment was overwhelmed by the superior forces of the Crimean Khan and Bakhtiarov himself was wounded in battle. During this time the Russian command was able to collect near Moscow a great Oboz field fortifications similar to the Gulye Gorods. On the morning on July 4 the Khan approached the capital. The Khan stationed his main body at the village of Kotla and sent troops out from there to fight. Crimeans attacked Russian troops stationed at the Oboz but could not achieve anything. At night the Russians sent a 3,000-man cavalry detachment under Vasily Yanov from the Oboz to attack the Khan's camp at Kolomenskoy just south of Moscow. In addition, Moscow scouts were sent to the Khan to inform him of a large army arriving from Novgorod. Alarmed by the Russian attack and cannon fire, the Crimean Khan on 6 July began a hasty retreat from the capital. The horde left Moscow for Serpikov, where they crossed the Oka and continued to retreat. Individual raiding parties that had separated from the main forces were defeated near Tula, Mikhailov and Pronsk. Russian cavalry troops were sent in pursuit of the retreating and demoralized Crimean horde. In last battles on the steppe the Khan himself was wounded, but he managed to preserve and bring back a part of his broken troops. 1592, in spring a 30,000-man troop under Feta I Guri and Bakhti Guri went to Tula, Mikhailov, Dedalov, Venyov, Kashira and Ryazan and took such a multitude of prisoners that the old people do not remember such wars. Using speed and suddenness, the Tatars ravaged the regions close to the border and took many prisoners. Boyar Prince Boris Kombulatovich Cherkaski set out from Tula against the Tatar princes. At the approach of the Russian troops the Tatar princes, who were camped near Mikhailov, led their men back to the steppes laden with booty and captives the 19th of May. Russian voivods followed the Tatars as far as Epiphon and then returned to their positions on the riverbank line. 1593, the Azov people Nogay operated near Voronezh and Livni unusually far south, 1594, in spring up to 8,000 Tatars raid the southern Russian lands. On 17 May near Shatsik, Russia appeared. 
Nogay and Azov Turks, under Mirza's Baron Ghazi Mirza Shedyakov, Islam Mirza and Azov Aga Dos Muhammad Dosmagmet. The town was besieged but an attempted storm was driven off by city voivod Prince Vi Koltsovi Masalski. The Shatsik voivod asked Moscow for help. Also Prince Vladimir Koltsov reported in the capital that Azov Aga Dos Muhammad having retreated to the steppe had been joined by 12,000 men under Crimean Prince Arazlan, and was preparing a new attack around Shatsik and Ryazan. The Russian government increased the garrisons at Zaraysk, Shatsik, Arzamas and Alatyr, and sent from Tula, Dedalov and Kripivna forces under Prince Vasily Golitsyn. Russian troops were placed at Epiphan and waited Tatar raids. Frightened by the Russian preparations, the Nogay and Azov people did not risk a second raid, but left the borderland and returned to their steppe pastures. 1595, in August 1594, the Polish army under Grand Crown Hetman Jan Zamoyski entered Moldavia and on 3 September captured Iasi and placed on the throne his protégé Iremia Movila. In October 25,000 Crimeans under Khan Ghazi II Guri invaded Moldavia. Jan Zamoyski with the Polish army 7,300 men went out from Yasi and on 6 October made a fortified encampment near Tutora. On 19–20 October there was a battle. The Khan encircled and attacked the Polish camp but the Poles repulsed all attacks and inflicted great losses. On 21 October Gezi Guri made a truce with the Grand Hetman and left Moldavia. See Moldavian Magnate Wars 1596, the Ryazan land was raided by the Crimean Tatars. Azov Aga Dos Muhammad again ravaged the Ryazan area. Topic: 1600 to 1648. Wars during the time of troubles, 1592 to 1613, and the Polish Muscovite War, 1605 to 18. Russia had little strength to fight the Tatars. By the Truce of Dulino, 1619, Poland held the area from Smolensk south to Chernagov. In 1632-34, Smolensk War, Russia failed to capture Smolensk. In the south the Moldavian Magnate Wars 1593-1621 continued Poles versus Turks in Moldavia. The Polish-Ottoman War 1633-34 was almost simultaneous with the Smolensk War. Raids, during the time of Troubles and its aftermath Russia had difficulty defending itself from Tatar raids. Raiding along the Oka Bank Line continued until at least 1633, which seems to be the last time the Oka was crossed. From about 1616 Russia built up forts southward on the line kaluga belgorod east of the Polish border. From around 1640 these had noticeable effects. In the south the Polish Ukraine was raided almost every year, with some tendency for the raided areas to move east. Turkish armies are mentioned more frequently. There were number of major battles in the Moldavian area. There were Cossack raids southward, but these are not listed here. 1597 to 1608 omitted in Russian Wikipedia 1606 to 1608 during the time of troubles 1605 to 1613 or 1618 the Crimean Khanate and the Nogai horde resumed their depredations on the defenseless Russian lands in 1607 to 1608 Nogai ravaged and burned many cities in the Ukraine or borderland and Severia the number of the enemy was up to 100,000 men the few and weak Russian outposts on the border could not offer effective resistance to the great mass of the steppe cavalry. Nomads burned towns, villages and suburbs, killing and taking prisoner the local inhabitants. In January 1606 the Ukrainian registered Cossacks from Korsan repulsed Nogai raiding parties with heavy losses to the enemy. C1608-1617, Lysozysi Polish bandit mercenaries raid areas that were also raided by Tatars. 1609, Crimean Khan Selimit I Guri organized a large military campaign against Russian Kingdom. Simultaneously, the Polish King Sigismund III Vesa with the Polish Lithuanian army besieged and took Smolensk, Siege of Smolensk 1609-11. Crimean Tatar Horde 40 to 80,000 men led by Kalga Janabek Guri Kanabek Guri used the Izyumsky Trail and slowly began to move toward Moscow. 
During his movement, Crimean Horde was divided into separate detachments and scattered in different directions, devastating and burning towns and villages, robing, killing, and taking captive the defenseless population. The Crimean Tatars devastated the southern districts, crossed over the river Oka, ravaged suburbs Tarusa, Serpikov, Kalamna, and Borosk. These were not the short term raids usual for the nomads, but continuous war, which lasted all summer and even threatened Moscow itself. The Crimeans did not meet resistance because the southern defense system created by Ivan the Terrible was disorganized and ineffective. 1610, in summer a Crimean Tatar horde 10, to 15, commanded Bogatyr Guri Beg and Kantamir Mirza from Budzak invaded the southern Russian lands and started to move on Moscow. Formally, the Tatars were sent to help the Tsar Vasily Shusky against the Polish-Lithuanian invaders. In reality the Crimeans had come again to plunder and ravage the Muscovite lands. Kalga Sultan Janabek Guri, with the main forces of the Horde was camped beyond the river Oka near Serpikov. Shusky from Moscow sent an embassy under Prince Boris Lykov with rich gifts to the Tartar camp. The Tsarist government unsuccessfully tried to turn the Crimean Horde against the Poles and the supporters of false Dmitri. The embassy was defended by a small force of Streltsy 400 men. But the treacherous Tatars plundered Russian embassy, seized the royal gifts and forced the men to flee. With a huge number of prisoners Kalga Sultan Janabek Guri with impunity returned to Crimea. Also in 1610, at the request of the Crimean Khan Selyumit Guri the Great Nogai Horde attacked the Ryazan land. At their head was Ak Mirza Baitarekov. 1611, Ryazan land devastated. The Crimean Nogai attack coincided with the first attempt to liberate Moscow from the Polish Lithuanian invaders. Crimeans and Nogai devastated the area around Ryazan, Likvin, Aleksin, Tarusa, and other southern Russian districts. In the border areas, the steppe nomads fought all summer. Ryazan complained to the capital that the Tartars had completely depopulated their land, the fields remained uncultivated, and that all the people were sitting under siege. 1612, in autumn the Ukrainian Cossacks defeated a great Tatar detachment at Bila Serkva and freed 5,000 captives. 1613, raids at Pronsk, Mikhailov and Ryazan. The Ryazan people reported to Moscow that the Tatars were attacking and burning down their houses while other Tartars remained for the winter, exposing the Ryazan land to constant looting. Also in that year the Great Nogai Horde attacked the Russian lands. They even crossed the Oka and raided the areas of Kolomna, Serpikov and Borosk and reached the outskirts of Moscow. Other Tatar bands ravaged suburbs and surroundings Pronsk, Mikhailov, Dedilova, Ryazan, Dankov and Kursk last two rather far south. 1614, Tatar hordes raid Podolia, Buhavina, Bratslav and Volhynia under the command of Bogatyr Guri Diviv Polish sources call him Bader Beg. In the same year 20,000 Nogai raided around Moscow. Other Nogai forces devastated the land around Temnikov and Alatyr, rather far east. In winter Tatars waged war on many cities, Kursk, Rilske, Komarichi, Karachev and Bryansk. As a result of the continuous raids a huge number of Russian prisoners were taken to Crimea. 1615, in spring the Tatar war returned in full force. Individual Tatar groups raided around Kromi and Oryol but these were only groups under independent leaders. The bulk of the attackers were Great and Small Nogay and Azov Tatars. In spring and summer the main enemy force up to 25, took the Kalmyus Trail and burst into the South Russian lands. Tatars and Nogay penetrated deep into the territory of the Russian state, settled at Serpikov and from there spread out to various places. The areas of Kolomna, Serpikov, Kaluga, and Borosk were raided. In July 1615 the Azov people and Nogay up to 3, made a new attack on the southern Russian frontier. In the winter and spring of 1615 the Crimean Tatar horde under Bogatyr Guri Diviv and Nuridin Azamat Guri twice ravaged right bank Ukraine. In August and September the Crimean Khan Janabek Guri with a great army which also included Turks brutally devastated the Ukraine. Lands as far as Bar, Ternopil and Lvov were raided. The Crimeans told Russian envoys of a huge number of captives. Crown field hetman Stanislaw Zokuski did not have enough forces to repulse the enemy. 
1616, Nogai Tatars came against Kursk, note Russian troops this far south against them from Kursk went Cossack chief Ivan Antipovich Anenkov, a chosen nobleman of the first rank, with a force of Kursk troops made up of Boyar sons and Kozaks, possibly lightly armed Tatars in the Russian service. There was a bloody battle 15 versts kilometers from town in which the Tatars were routed, many were taken prisoner and the captives released. The raiders in 1616 were Azov people, Kazavsi Kazimirz's men, and the great Nogai horde. Initially Azov men fell on the settlements of the Don Cossacks and burned some of them. The Tatars reached the Kazel's country, where the Polish-Lithuanian invaders were also fighting Polish Muscovite War. There were scattered skirmishes with Russian forces. In one of these was killed border guard Voivod M. Dmitriev. Crimean and Budjak Tatars invaded southern Polish territory and devastated Pokusha Middle Galicia. Crown field hetman Stanislaw Zokuski with a small force placed himself on the Polish-Moldavian border and prevented the expected Turkish invasion. 1617, in summer the small Nogai horde and Azov Tatars three times invaded South Russia. The Nogai Mirzas camped at Serpikov and sent out detachments to plunder the villages and take prisoners. The Mirzas justified their raids by the government's failure to send previously promised tribute. In the same year the Crimean Tatars under Kalga Sultan Devlet Guri made a new destructive raid into the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Crimeans fought near Kanov, Bila Serkva and the Nogai went to Lvov. Registered Cossacks tried to block the path of the numerically superior hordes, but were defeated. In summer a large Turko-Tatar army under Iskender Pasha went to the Polish border. Polish Crown Hetman Jolkiewski and the Polish Noble Army went to Podolia and placed themselves on the border. There were negotiations and on 23 September a Polish-Turkish peace treaty was made at Busha Yuruga, peace of Busha. During the peace negotiations Crimean Tatars broke through the Polish border and ravaged Galicia. 1618, at the request of the Turkish Sultan the Crimean Khan Janibek Guri organized a new raid on Poland. The first raid was in May under Kantomir Mirza of the Budjak Horde. Then in summer Kalga Sultan Devlet Guri with the Crimean Horde invaded the Ukraine. An attack on the Polish camp near Kamionets Podilski failed, but Tartar raiding parties for six weeks ravaged the area of Vinnytsia, Bar, Tarnopol, Sinyatsa, Dubno and Lvov. 1619, in January the Truce of Dulino ends the Polish-Muscovite War 1605 In spring Zokuski gathered a Polish army and camped on the Polish-Moldavian border. In turn Iskender Pasha at the head of the Turkish army went to the Polish border. With the mediation of Moldovan ruler Gaspar Graziani talks were started and a truce was arranged. 1620, a new campaign of Crown Prince Devlet Guri in the southern Polish lands, Podolia and Bratslav eastern Podolia. The campaign led to the complete defeat of the Polish forces by the Turko-Tatar army at the Battle of Sikora 1620 in Moldavia. The Polish commander Jokuski was killed. The flower of the Polish nobility was captured. The Tatars took great booty and important captives for whom they received great ransoms. One of those captured was the young Bodin Komelnitsky. 1621, Article Battle of Khotan 1621 seems to contradict much of this paragraph. At the request of the Sultan the Crimean Khan Janibek Guri made a new attack on Poland with 100,000 Crimeans, Great and Small Nogayan, Mountain Cherkassians. At the Battle of Khotan 1621, a huge Turko-Tatar army 150,000 Turks and 60,000 Tatars, led by the Ottoman Sultan Osman II suffered a complete defeat sick by the Polish-Lithuanian Cossack troops under the command of Grand Lithuanian Hetman Jan Karol Chudkovich, Stanislaw Lubomirski and Ukrainian Hetman Petro Konashevich Sahidikny. The Treaty of Khotan ends the Polish-Ottoman War 1620-1621, the last part of the Moldavian Magnate Wars. 1622, Campaign to Tula, ravaging of Odoyev, Belayov, Dedalov. Kursk Voivod Stepan Mikhailovich Yushikov ordered I.A. Anenkov to pursue the Tatars, a large group of whom were roaming about the Kursk region. Anenkov with Boyar sons and Cossacks caught up with the Tatars on the Izium Trail on the edge of the Oskol region, defeated them, took many captives and rescued the Russian captives. These people had been taken from the Mt. Sensk, Odoyev, Belayov and Chern regions. 
The other Tatars, laden with an enormous amount of stolen loot, avoided the Kursk area once they heard what Anenkov had done to their friends. They made their way through the little used trails on the high ground between the basins of the Dnieper and Don, between the Sources and Rat of the Seam and Kshina, Sima and Oskol, Donetsk Semitsa, Olshana, Korosha and Kalana apparently small rivers east of Kursk. But the art and good management of Anenkov and the bravery of his troops defeated the nomads. 1623, the Tatars again attacked Belgorod. Belgorod troops defeated the attack and won a battle on the Kalin River flows east to join the Oskol between Steri and Novi Oskol. In the same year, Voivod S. M. Yushikov, having learned that the Tartar hordes were heading from Orlov possibly the one ne of Voronezh to Kursk, sent 300 boyar sons from Kirchen, Cossacks remaining from the Putovil service, and 100 infantry with firearms. The Tatars came to Russia and fought around Orlov, Karachev, Mt. Sensk, and Bolkov and then left altogether on the Bakhmut Trail. Bakhmut is south of the Donets. After them were sent Cossack Stanitsa chiefs and Kursk Boyar sons. Anenkov was sent with the remaining Boyar sons. At the request of Yushikov Belgorod Voivod Prince Tyukin also sent a detachment of Boyar sons and Cossacks under Vasily Torbin and Plakid Temurov who joined with Anenkov on the Kotlibansky Semitsa River east of Kursk where the Tatars were stopping by the Seam River. There was a terrible battle, and the Tartars were defeated completely. 1624, Crimean Tatars again tried to cross southern Russian border near Belgorod, but failed, the meaning of border. Is not clear. On 5 June, the Budjak horde led by Kantomir Mirza broke through from Moldova to the southern lands of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth near Sniatin in Pokutia. On 9 June, Kantomir Mirza crossed the Dniester near Martinov and on 10 June camped near Shemizel, from which he sent troops to plunder and capture prisoners. Nogai raiding parties moved on Krasno, Yaroslav, and Jesub. One Nogai party was able to the reach Sandomir's area. Crown Field Hetman Stanislaw Konietspolsky gathered a 5,000-man army and decided to attack the Budjak Horde while it was returning from a raid. On the night of 1920th June Konietspolsky crossed the Dniester and moved to Halic. Kantomir Mirza sent part of his cavalry in pursuit of the Polish Corps, while his camp moved to Martinov. On 20 June at the Battle of Martinow the 5,000-man Polish army under Konietspolsky inflicted a heavy defeat on the Budjak Tatars. The Poles pursued the retreating Nogay for 90 km. 1625, Belgorod troops defeated Tatar troops on the Krasnaya River location? In autumn Crimean Khan Mehmed III Guri and Nuruddin Azamat Guri led another campaign against Poland. There were up to 60,000 Crimean, Nogai and up to 20,000 Turkish troops from Belgorod, Bilhorod Dnistrovsky. Crimean and Turkish troops fought near Bar, Gallic and Lvov, penetrating even into Lesser Poland. Individual Tatar raiding parties penetrated into the Ruthenian and Bels Vojvodstivios near Lvov. However, the Polish campaign ended unsuccessfully. Field Crown Hetman Konietspolski and Grand Crown Strażnik Stefan Szmielecki with the Polish army and Cossack troops destroyed small Tatar parties and liberated prisoners. Tatars suffered heavy losses in killed and wounded up to 10,000 men. The Crimeans returned from the Polish campaign in the spring of following year, and many died while crossing the Dniester. They reached Crimea in mid-April 1626. According to Russian ambassadors, the total reaching Crimea was up to 50,000 people. 1626, in spring, at the request of the Sultan, Khan Mehmed III Guri organized a new campaign against Poland. Instead of going himself he sent Kantomir Mirza. Both the Khan and Kalga Shahin Guri promised to go, but they were afraid to leave the Crimea, because, according to Russian sources, they were quarreling and did not trust each other. In August Nuruddin Sultan Azamat Guri made a campaign to the southern Polish lands. The Tatar horde devastated the Kiev region, did much damage and returned to the Crimea in October. The Tatar horde invaded the Kiev Voivodsvo and placed its camp near Bila Serkva. From here Nuruddin Azamat Guri sent raiding parties to raid nearby towns and villages. Grand Crown Strażnik Stefan Szmielecki with 2,000 Polish noble troops and Mikhailo Doroshenko with Cossack regiments marched on the main body of the Tatar hordes. In September Szmielecki with 3,000 Polish troops and Doroshenko with 6,000 Cossacks fell on the main Tatar camp at Bila Serkva and routed the forces of Azamat Guri. 
1628, the Kursk voivod called on I. A. Anenkov, who was living on his estates and famous for his courage, and assigned him the military forces of the Kursk nobles, Boyar sons and other military men for a campaign against the Tatars. Anenkov moved south in the direction of Belgorod and 100 versts kilometers, approximately, from Kursk caught up with the Tatars who had taken many prisoners. He enveloped their camp, took it, and freed the Russian prisoners. But the predators did not let up and approached Kursk. Here at night and ten versts from Kursk on the Vinogrobla River Anenkov defeated the Tatars and captured their chiefs. 1629, in spring 4,000 Tatars fell on the Ukrainian lands, and began to ravage around Yumen. Grand Crown Strażnik Chmielecki with Polish troops inflicted heavy losses on the Tatars and forced them to withdraw to the steppe. In August Crimean Khan Janibek Guri organized a large raid on Poland. A large 12,000-man horde under Kalga Sultan Devlet Guri and Kantamir Mirza with Tatar troops moved on Moldavia, from which they suddenly attacked Podolia. Devlet Guri dispersed his troops from the Dniester River and chose an assembly point near Zolochev Zolichev? Crimeans and Nogay began to ravage the nearest towns and villages, killing and taking captive the local population. Grand Crown Strażnik Chmielecki with Polish troops and Hetman Rihori Chorna with Cossack regiments destroyed isolated Tatar and Nogai raiding parties which had been sent to loot and take prisoners. Near Burshtin the Poles and Ukrainian Cossacks defeated the main 7,000-man Tatar horde under Kantomir's son. The victors killed the majority of the Tatars and freed 10,000 captives. In this unsuccessful campaign the Tatars and Nogay lost in killed and captured up to 15,000 men. Kantamir's son was among the dead and among the captured was Crown Prince Islam Guri who later became Khan Islam III Guri and was the brother of Azamat Guri. In January 1630 the Tatars returned to Crimea without a single captive. 1632, plunder of M.T. Sensk, Novosel, Oryol, Kaprivna, Livni and Elitz. In April to May the vanguard of Tatar troops entered the Russian land from three directions, the Kalmius, Izium and Moravsky trails. The main force 20, men under Mirza's Salmash and Devlet Guri in June crossed the Donets and began raiding around Livni, Karachev, Elitz, Belgorod, Kursk, Oskol, Oryol, Mt. Sensk, Dankov, Sapozhkov, Venef, Voronezh, Lebedian, Pronsk, Mikhailov, Ryusk, Kashira and Petrnikov. There were battles with the Crimeans near Novosel, Mt. Sensk, Lebedian and other South Russian towns. In that year Belgorod withstood two attacks, Lithuanian and Tatar, the last taking many captives and raiding the Kursk and Rilske regions. The Rilske Voyevod, having defeated them with the aid of the Rilske Boyar sons, received a letter Gramotu from Tsar Mikhail praising him and the Rilske Boyar sons. In the same year Voivod I. Velyamanov freed 2,700 captives near Novosel. 1633A, ravaging the areas around Serpikov, Tarusa, Kaluga, Aleksin, Kashira, Kalamna and Ryazan. In summer 30,000 Crimean Tatars under Prince Mubarak Guri son of Khan Janabek Guri, using the Izium Trail, invaded the southern Russian lands. The horde came to Livni, ravaged the bordering areas and divided into separate raiding parties. Crimean Tatars even dared to attack the areas near the fortresses that they passed. On 24 July Prince Mubarak Guri and the main force approached Serpikov on the Oka. Near Serpikov at the village Berezna there were fierce battles between the Tatars and forces sent out from the city against them. On the 22nd of July the Crimeans came to Tula and ravaged the surrounding area. Soldiers sent from the city engaged in battle with the Tatars at the meadow near Scarlet Mountain. The Tula people drove the enemy from the city. During the campaign troops of Mubarak Guri even crossed the Oka River and reached the outskirts of Moscow. Individual Tatar and Nogai raiding parties ravaged around Ryazan, Kashira, Kalamna, Pronsk, Zaraysk, Serpikov, Tarusa, Obolensk either of two places near Serpikov, Kaluga, Aleksin, Vorodiansk, Bolkov, Belayov and Livni. By the estimate of A. A. Novoselsky from those areas alone were taken into captivity about 6,000 people. Enemy troops raided other South Russian areas, but the information on how many were captured has not survived. 1633b, the relative quiet of the Tatar attacks on Russia in the late 30s and early 40s of the 17th century is undoubtedly due to the occupation of Azov by the Don Cossacks. 
The Russian government, not wanting to start a large war with Turkey, did not accept Azov from the Cossacks or send troops and after a long occupation the Cossacks left the town in 1642. The builders of the Belgorod Line and residents of the southern Russian districts, by the increase of Tatar attacks, immediately felt the change in the situation on the lower reaches of the Don. The Turkish fort of Azov was held by Don and Zaporozhian Cossacks from 1637 to 1642. It is not clear how this would have affected raiding. 1633 c. In summer of 1633, 2000 Budjak Tatars invaded the southern Polish land and began to ravage Podolia. Crown field hetman Stanislaw Konietzpolski camping with the Polish army at Bar, led the 2000 cavalry against the Tatars and forced them to retreat. He then crossed the Dniester and on 4 July at the Battle of Sasawi Raj 1633, on the Prut River, he defeated enemy. Poles captured several Budjak Mirzas, among whom was the son-in-law of Kantomir Mirza, freed all the captives and captured a large part of the loot. In August the Pasha of Silistra, Abaza Mehmed Pasha, led the Turkish troops to the Polish border and encamped near Koton. Konietzpolski with a Polish army 9,250 men went out to meet the enemy and established fortified camp near the fortress Kamenets Podolski. Initially Abaza Pasha entered into peace negotiations with Konietzpolski. On 19 September the Budjak Horde 5, to 10, men under Kantomir Mirza arrived to help Abaza Pasha. On 20 September Abaza Pasha crossed the Dniester and Kantomir Mirza attacked the Polish position. On 23 September Abaza Pasha, confident of his numerical superiority, attacked the Polish camp near Kamenets, but was defeated and forced to retreat to Moldavia. 1634, Oryol Voivod D. Koltovsky freed 650 captives not far from the town. 1637, in September 40,000 Crimeans under Nuruddin Safa Guri broke through the southern defense line constructed near Yablanov on the Belgorod Lind west of Novi Oskol on the Izium Trail. Tatars and Nogay ravaged the areas of Livni, Oryol, Karachev, Bolkov, Kromsk, Novosil and the Komaritsky. 2,281 people were captured. 1640, in January a large Tatar horde under Kalga Sultan Islam Guri the future Islam III Guri and younger brother of Khan Bakadir I Guri used the Cherny Trail to invade the right bank Ukraine. Islam Guri camped near Steri Konstantinov, from which he sent raiding parties to the little towns and villages. The Crimean Tatars and Nogay terribly ravaged Volhynia, Podolia and Galicia, taking a large number of captives. Grand Crown Hetman Stanislaw Konietzpolski, collecting the Polish army and Cossack regiments, forced the Crimeans to retreat beyond the Dnieper. In autumn of 1641 the Tatar horde made a robber campaign on right bank. Konietzpolski gathered a Polish Cossack army, stationed them at Kodak Fortress, moved against the Tatars beyond the Vorskla River and forced them to retreat to the steppe. 1642, attacks occur with small forces, the enemy making little attempt to penetrate deep into Russia. But learning the location of the new Russian fortifications and not worrying about their rear areas, in the next years Tatars dealt serious blows to the most vulnerable places. From January the Crimeans and Nogay undertook small raids to the towns and villages along the Ukrainian border. In summer of 1643 a 4,000-man horde fell on the left bank Ukraine, but were defeated by the Cossacks. In January 1644 20,000 Tatars under Perikop Mirza Tugay Bay invaded the Ukraine. Konietzpolsky, mobilized the Ukrainian nobility, gathered crown forces and registered Cossacks and spread them along the whole border. On 30 January 1644 the Polish Cossack regiments defeated the main forces of Tugay Bay at Akhmatovy, as well as in other places. 1643, renewed heavy Tatar attacks on Russia, drought and famine in the Crimea, which reached its greatest extent in 1644-1645 and continued for several years, thereby making it easier for Tatar Mirzas to gather under their banners thousands of ordinary Tatars and to send them to rob Russian villages and countryside. For their blows the Tatars selected unfortified places along the Nogai, Kalmius and Moravsky trails. Advancing up the Nogai trail they stopped before reaching the Kozlov wall and turned west attacks were on villages located on the banks of the Voronezh River, southwest of Kozlov, east of Lebedian and north of Voronezh. Zaporozhian Cossacks participated in the raids. Tatars crossed to the west bank of the Voronezh River and penetrated the Elitz district. 
the Calmius Trail remained open. In the spring of 1643 were built on the left bank of the Oskol River Zestovoy Stolai Ostrozek permanent watch posts, but the service men only watched the Tatar movements from their towers. The small forts of Oshinovi and Razdorsky could not hold back the Tatars between the upper Tikaya Sosna River and the Oskol River between the two Oskols and Voronezh. On 17 May the Razdorsky fort fired on the Tatars with cannon, but that did not stop the enemy squad of 2,500. The Morovsky Trail remained open. New forts at Volny and Kotmysk stood on the sidelines. In 1643 the Tatars began their invasion along the Kalmius Trail and in several cases returned with their booty along the Morovsky Trail. The Belgorod service men fought the Tartars but could not stop them. In 1643, reporting on one of these battles, the Belgorod Voivod N. M. Boborikin again raised the question of the construction of fortifications on the Karpov Watch area. He rightly believed that if there were Russian towns and forts there the Tatars would not have gone unpunished. In early 1644 the military department again decided to build forts in the Karpov Watch area, on the right bank of the Vorskla River, extending the line southwest from Belgorod. The plan was to build a permanent fort. The foundation was laid on 13 April. It was built by Belgorod people under Cossack Stanitsa chief Ivan Rishkov. On 15 May it was ready. By summer it had 60 Rilske and Sesk, Streltsy. In autumn 1644 the military department undertook to turn the Karpov permanent fort into an inhabited town, but could not collect enough free voluntary people. Karpov became an inhabited town in 1646, when an earth wall was built. Prior to this the one permanent fort did not represent a large obstacle for the Tatars. 1641, sick in the Russian wiki, 1,000 Tatars crossed the Donets at the mouth of the Durkal River, and went to raid around Kursk and Voronezh, having previously sent out significant parties into the steppe to operate on a wider radius. 1644, in this year a very heavy blow was delivered to the South Russian lands. At the beginning of August the main army 30,000 to 40,000 men concentrated on the northern border sick of the Khanate on the Oral River, and Samara River Dnieper. Using the part of the Morovsky Trail that remained unblocked, they passed the Karpov Fort, skirted the Vorskla River on the east side, and by the Bekai of Trial west to Putovil, raided the Putovil district. In late August and early September they seized many captives in the Putovil, Rilske, Sesk districts, the Komaritsky, Volost, and also the nearby Polish districts. Prisoners were estimated at a third of the Tatar army. Therefore, apparently, 10,000 people. The noble cavalry regiments were originally spread along the Oka River and gave absolutely no help to the inhabitants of the southwestern districts. The people protected themselves in cities and forts, in forests and ravines. Service men from Belgorod, Yablanov and Korosha between Belgorod and Novi Oskol went to fight on the open steppe but could not repulse the far larger enemy forces. 1645, the fact that the Morovsky Trail was essentially open allowed a large mass of Tatars to invade Russia. The Khan ordered a winter raid. Again the southwest districts including Kursk suffered terrible destruction. December was unusually cold so hunger and cold killed many captives. Novoselsky estimated more than 6,000 captives for that year. The Tatars also suffered heavy losses while they ravaged the Rilske, Putovil and Komaritsky districts and carried away 5,749 prisoners. A larger number of victims was avoided because of the actions of the Kursk Voivod Prince Semyon Pajarsky. A third of the Crimean army under Nuruddin Sultan Ghazi Guri did not return. Contributing to the Tatar success was the lack of a unified command on the newly created defense line. In December the Russian government gave Belgorod Voivod Prince F. A. Kilkov the temporary command of the service men of Yablanov, Kuroki, Uzard, Volny and Kotmysk east-west part of Belgorod line across Novi Oskol, but the order arrived after the Tatars had left. Comparing the raids of the 30s with those of the 40s it is easy to see that the new fortification line significantly reduced the area of Russia open to Tatar raids. The Kozlov Wall closed the road to Ryazan and the Yablanov Wall same east-west line as above blocked the direct road to Livni and Tula. In the 1643-1645 the Tatars did not reach the Oka, and under these conditions the traditional practice of holding troops on the Oka was clearly absurd. 1648, uh, the Tatars are defeated on an unsuccessful campaign to the Oka River lands. 
In January small raiding parties appeared on both banks of the Dnieper, but after some skirmishes with Polish Cossack troops they retreated to the steppes. Wars 1648–1709 In this period we are dealing not with raids but large armies, Russian, Polish, Cossack and Turkish. Since the Russian Wikipedia spends too much time on strictly military events, we will summarize them here and translate only information about raids, to the extent that the two can be separated. The Komelnitsky Uprising against Poland 1648 quickly turned into a class religious national conflict in which landowners, Poles, Catholics and Jews were killed or driven west. The rebellious Cossacks were not able to form a stable government and made short-lived alliances with every nearby power. The so-called Ruin Ukrainian History C1657-1709. Russian support for the rebels led to the Russo-Polish War 1654 to 1667. Initial Russian successes drew in other powers and the Commonwealth was nearly destroyed, the so-called deluge in Polish history. Poland recovered after losing perhaps a third of its population. In 1667 a border was recognized along the Dnieper, with Russia gaining Kiev and now claiming land east of the river. During the ruined Turkish armies joined in several times. The large number of Cossack troops implies a significant increase in the Ukrainian population. The fighting west of the Dnieper drove population east of that river. In the Ukraine Tatar raiders would normally support one faction or another and would often switch sides to keep either side from becoming too strong. In Russia there were no raids reported in this list from 1649 to 1664. It appears that the new Belgorod line was beginning to hold. Topic: 1648 to 1655 Komelnitsky Uprising. Crimea was allied with, 1648, March, Cossacks, 1649, August, Poles, 1650, Cossacks, 1651, June, Poles, 1652, Summer, Cossacks, 1654, February, Poles. Russia supported the Cossacks in 1654-57. 1648A, the Tatars are defeated on an unsuccessful campaign to the Oka River lands. In January small raiding parties appeared on both banks of the Dnieper, but after some skirmishes with Polish Cossack troops they retreated to the steppes. 1648b, Cossack victories, Zavti Vodi, Korsin, Pelyavtsi The revolt began in January and Kamilnitsky began negotiations with the Cossacks' traditional enemy in Crimea. Khan Islam III Guri sent to Zaporozhye 4,000 men under Perikop Mirza Tugay Bey. By March the two groups were allied against Poland. In April Komelnitsky, 5,000 Cossacks and Turgay Bey's men moved west. In April and May the first Polish forces were defeated at the Battle of Zavti Vodi and Battle of Korsan. In May the Khan himself with 11,000 Tatars joined his new ally at Bila Serkva White Church, and from there sent raiding parties to plunder and ravage the surrounding Ukrainian lands, devastating the Kiev region and Volhynia and taking many captives. The Khan returned to Crimea and in September sent another army under his brother the Kalga Karim Guri. The Tatars did not sick participate in the Battle of Pelyavtsi but joined later and participated in the sieges of Lvov and Zamosk. In all of these battles the Crimean Tatar troops proved to be unreliable allies, fighting only for their own goal, which was to rob people and carry away captives for sale in Crimea. Islam Guri feared a serious weakening of Poland, and constantly betrayed his ally Komelnitsky. In July there was a Cossack defeat at the Battle of Starokoschentanov. 1649a, Tatars switch sides at Zaborov, after a short armistice, at the beginning of summer a Polish-Lithuanian army marched to the Ukraine against Komelnitsky, who had 70,000 Cossacks and the same number of Crimean Tatars. The Crimean Khan Islam Guri led 30,000 Tatars to the aid of his ally Komelnitsky. From June to August Polish troops were surrounded at the siege of Zbaraj. The new Polish king, John II Casimir Vesa led an army to raise the siege. Komelnitsky left part of his infantry to continue the siege, and met the king at the Battle of Zaborov which was to some degree a Cossack victory. Unable to deal with the Ukrainian Cossacks with weapons, the Polish government bribed the Crimean Khan. 
The Khan issued an ultimatum to the Ukrainian hetman, either peace with the king, or the Tatars would join the Poles. Khmelnytsky had no choice but to agree. On 18 August 18 the Treaty of Zaborov was signed, but neither side implemented it. Jan Casimir promised the Tatars a large ransom and allowed them to take captives and rob the Ukrainian lands on the way to the Crimea. From Zaborov the Tatars slowly moved to the Crimea, with impunity devastating and plundering all the nearby Ukrainian lands. Moving through the Ukrainian lands, Islam Ghari sent out raiding parties to rob, rape and enslave the Ukrainian population. By the Treaty of Zaborov the Polish king officially allowed the Crimean Khan to ruin and loot the Ukrainian lands along the road to Perikop. After leaving Zbaraj the Crimeans sent out detachments to take captive the peaceful inhabitants and also Cossacks returning from the fighting. Nogai and Tatar raiding parties spread through Volhynia and Red Ruthenia, plundering, pillaging and taking captive the defenseless Ukrainian population. Yampol, Zaslavl, Ostro, Meziboj, Alika, Tuchin, Polone, Dirajna, Kolki minor places for this year are almost all in Volhynia and many other Ukrainian places were destroyed and burned, and the local people killed or robbed or taken by the Tatars to Crimea and sold into slavery. Crimean Tatars attacked and devastated the outskirts of Lutsik, the center of the Volhynian Voivodstvio. Immediately after the Battle of Zaborov the Crimeans fell on Zolichev and Balai Cayman, looting and taking the inhabitants into slavery. At Toporkov Polish troops recaptured all of the prisoners. The cities of Belz, Sokol and Rubishov greatly suffered from the Tatars. Everywhere the Crimeans with the help of Cossacks robbed and killed people, took captives into slavery, stole cattle and carried them to the steppe. The Ukrainian hetman sent Bratslav Colonel Daniel Neche and Chernagov Colonel Martin Nababa to accompany the Crimean Tatars to Bar and on to the steppe. Moscow envoys reported that on the way back to Crimea the Tatars invaded and destroyed 15 Ukrainian towns and their neighborhoods. The Putovil Voivod said in his report to Moscow that according to eyewitnesses, they led to Crimea countless captives, most were of the female sex, and the men were all flogged. 1649b, following the Battle of Zaborov, along with the Tartars several groups of rebels helped to devastate their own land. A Cossack and peasant horde under Nababa, Donetsk and Golovatsky surrounded the town of Ostro where up to 20,000 people had taken refuge. The Cossacks were able to convince the inhabitants to let them into the city and with Tatar assistance treacherously seized the town. The Cossacks and Tatars looted and burned the city, killing many people. The remaining population was taken captive. 200 people bravely defended themselves and were allowed to leave after paying a ransom. The inhabitants of Zaslavl voluntarily surrendered to the Cossacks. The citizens and Cossacks together slaughtered in all the Catholics and Jews. Soon the Tatars arrived, who robbed and tortured people and carried others into captivity. 1651a Polish victories, Beresteko and Bielaserkva fighting resumed when a large Polish army entered Volhynia. The Cossacks were joined by at least 30,000 Tatars and 5,000 Janissaries under the Silistrian Pasha. In June, on the third day of the Battle of Beresteko the Tatars fled the field. When Komelnitsky went to recall them they took him prisoner. The leaderless Cossacks fought on but only a few thousand escaped the slaughter. The Khan freed Komelnitsky for a large ransom. He parted from the Khan at Starokoschentinov and returned to the Ukraine accompanied by five Tatar Mirzas with troops and a Cossack squadron. In September, after the unsuccessful Battle of Bila Serkva 1651, Komelnitsky had to sign the Treaty of Bila Serkva with the Polish king. 1651b, during or after, Beresteko, the Khan and his horde moved slowly along the trails of Volhynia, devastating and burning the surrounding towns and villages, killing and taking prisoner the defenseless population. The Khan sent a letter to Komelnitsky in which he refused military assistance and even threatened war. Komelnitsky told his colonels to smash and destroy the Tatar raiding parties that were scattered in the Volhynian and Bratslav Voivodstvios. Crimeans, Budjak Tatars and Nogay scattered around the nearby Ukrainian lands, looting, killing and taking captive the defenseless locals. At Starokonstantinov the Tatars attacked a Cossack detachment which was going to the aid of the Cossacks at Berichko and captured 15 cannon and all the supplies. Cossack peasant troops called up by Komelnitsky began to smash and destroy the Tatar raiding parties that had separated from the main force. Tatars suffered losses from the Cossacks in the battles Pavlok, Chidniv and on the Amansky Trail. 
Large detachments were defeated by the Cossacks under Yuman Colonel Joseph Gluck at Blue Waters and Tsar's Ford. The Cossacks recaptured all the captives and loot. 1652, Cossack victory, Batog in summer Komelnitsky made a peace treaty with the Khan for a renewed attack on Poland. The Khan sent 15,000 men under his younger brother the Nuruddin Adil Guri. On 1–2 June at the Battle of Batog 45,000 Cossacks and Tatars under Komelnitsky defeated a 20,000-man Polish noble army under Marcin Kalinowski. More than 8,000 Polish soldiers were captured and executed, including high-ranking officers. Among the dead was Kalinowski.1653, Poles saved when Tatars changed sides at Zhva Nets. In autumn, Komelnitsky and the Khan agreed to make a new attack on the Commonwealth. On the 11th of September, the Khan led a huge horde from Perekop to the Ukraine to join his ally in the struggle against Poland. With the Khan were Budjak Tatars, Nogay and Circassians, Nuruddin Sultan Adil Guri, several princes, and many Tatar and Nogay Mirzas. His army numbered up to 40,000 men. Kalga Sultan Ghazi Guri stayed behind to guard Crimea. Numerous Tatar Nogai raiding parties scattered across Volhynia, Podolia, and Galicia, robbing, murdering, and taking captive the defenseless Ukrainian population. At the beginning of October, six Cossack regiments and 20,000 Crimean Tatars under Karich Mirza gathered at Bila Serkva. Komelnitsky himself moved to the town. With him were 30,000 Cossacks and 40,000 Tatars under Crimean Khan Islam Guri. The Khan sent Tatar and Nogai raiding parties to the nearby Ukrainian lands. The Crimeans reached Bar, Kamenets, Tarabovol, Lutsik and Lvov, always robbing, killing and taking captives. Cossacks and Tatars fell on Volhynia, where they captured Zaslav, Korets and Ostrog killing and capturing Poles and Jews. The Polish king Jan Casimir was able to collect 30,000 gentry militia at a fortified camp near Zhva Nets. From September to December the Cossack Tatar army besieged the camp. Battle of Zhva Nets. The Polish command entered into secret negotiations with the Crimean Khan, who did not wish the complete destruction of the Commonwealth. The Khan for the third time betrayed his ally Bogdan Komelnitsky and ordered him to cease hostilities and sign a truce with the Polish king. The Polish king agreed to pay the Khan 100,000 zlotys, and, in a secret agreement, allowed the Tatars 40 days to take captives in Volhynia. Numerous Tatar and Nogai raiding parties scattered around the nearby Ukrainian lands, looting and pillaging, killing and capturing defenseless locals. Volhynia, Podolia and Bratslav province were devastated. In addition to Ukrainians, the Tatars and Nogai captured and sent into slavery more than 5,000 Polish gentry. Returning from Zhva Nets to the southern steppes the Tatars ravaged the Cossack lands through which they passed. They burned to the ground several small settlements and took captive all the inhabitants. Concluding a separate peace with the Commonwealth, the Tatar horde brought devastation to the nearby Ukrainian towns and villages, killing and capturing the local population. 1654, Russia enters, Russian support for the Cossacks led to Russo-Polish War 1654-1667. In February the new Crimean Khan Mehmed IV Guri allied with Poland against Russia and the Ukraine. In autumn Polish Tatar troops began raids on Podolia and the Bratslav region, but they were defeated by Russian Cossack troops near Akhmatov, near Lvov and at the mouths of the Dnieper and Bug Sick. This sentence does not make sense. 1655, Cossacks lose and win in January at the Battle of Akhmadiv 1655, Cossack Russian army was able to withdraw after being defeated by a Polish Tatar army. At the end of the year Komelnitsky and a Muscovite army under Voivods Vasily Baturlin and Gregory Romodanovsky defeated a Polish army under Crown Hetman Stanislaw Rewira. Potocki at Slonogradic location, captured Lublin and besieged Lvov. A large Tatar horde came to the aid of the Poles. They were joined by Polish troops under Bratslav Voivod Peter Potocki. After learning of the Polish Tatar movements Komelnitsky and Baturlin lifted the siege of Lvov, took a ransom from the city and set out after the Tatars. On 9–12 November at the Battle of Ozernaya Strelka location, the Cossack Russian army under Komelnitsky and Vasily Baturlin broke the Crimean Tatar horde, may need verification. The Khan asked Komelnitsky for a personal meeting, after which both leaders parted mortal enemies. The Tatars returned to Perikop. 
1656, Crimean and Azov Tatars came to Shatsik, took a few prisoners, horses and cattle but were driven off. If this is Shatsik, Russia this is the only reported raid to Russia proper, but there is a Shatsik, Ukraine in Volhynia. There will be some contradiction in what follows as the article is being retranslated. Topic. 1657–1663 Vyhovsky and the Poles After Komelnitsky's death Ivan Vyhovsky and then Yuri Komelnitsky made a deal with Poland. This led to a Russian invasion and defeat at Konotop 1659. The pro-Russian party revolted and by 1663 the Ukraine divided along the Dnieper between the pro-Polish right bank Ukraine and the pro-Russian left bank. In 1667 Russia and Poland recognized the division Truce of 1657, Martin Pushkar revolted against the pro-Polish Vyhovsky. Vyhovsky and 40,000 Tatars besieged, captured and burned Poltava and killed Puskar. 1658A, Vyhovsky and his Tatar allies defeated at Zenkov Cossacks under Adaman Silka. The town was given to the Tatars who cut down all the people in the area. Vyhovsky tried to storm Kiev, but was defeated by troops of Kiev Voyevod Vasily Borisovich Sheremetev. This implies that Kiev was now held by Russia. 1658B, on 1 September several hundred Tatars tried to break through into the Voronezh district on the bridge over the Usman River at the village of Usman Sobakan. The Usman Adamans and Orlov Gorodic dragoons drove them off apparently meaning local Cossacks and Russian soldiers. Then at the village of Gololobov they were driven off by peasants. The same Tatar band tried to cross over the Voronezh River south of the town but was blocked there also. On 7 the September they managed to break through east of Voronezh and pass through the Belgorod line. They burst into the villages of Repno and Pridacha near Voronezh, but meeting stubborn resistance from the population, they quickly went back to the steppe. They took only 21 captives. 1659A, in June, Russian invasion defeated by Yaihovsky and Tatars at the Battle of Konotop. Russians pull back to Putovil, this implies that Russia could now move a major army south, an important fact for raids north of the Belgorod line. 1659b, raids around Elitz, Livni, Novosil, Mt. Sensk, Kursk, Volkov, Voronezh and other areas, 4,674 farmsteads or estates, burned, 25,448 people captured. March on Tula. The voivods of Usman and Orlov reported constant Tatar approaches to the Belgorod line. 1659c, in the summer, after the Russian defeat at Konotop, the Khan organized another attack on the Muscovite borderlands. On 15-16 August the Khan broke through between Verksosensk and Uzard and stood for two days beyond the wall, waiting for fighting men. He then went from the Tikaya Sosna River to the Valuyi River and the upper reaches of the Palatavka River. He stopped there two days and then crossed the Kalitva River. It is not clear how this move could have gotten him north of the Belgorod line below. The traitor Vyhovsky sent the Khan 4,000 Cossacks under Colonel Ivan Kravchenko. The Khan sent raiding parties to the surrounding Russian districts. The afflicted areas were Efremov, Elitz, Livni, Chernova, Teletsky, Steri Oskol, Novosil, Mt. Sensk, Chern, Kursk, Oboyan, Karpov, Bolkov, Kotmyshysk, Volny, Voronezh, Usman, and Sokolsh. 1660, wars. With the end of the Second Northern War, the Poles were able to turn their attention to Russia. The Khan Mehmed IV Guri sent 15,000 men under Nuruddin Murad Guri to help the Poles. In September at the Battle of Lubar the Russians and Cossacks barely got away after being defeated. In October, Battle of Slobodushchi, location equals, Yuri Komelnitsky was blocked from joining the Russians. In November, Battle of Chidnov, the Russians were defeated by the Poles and enslaved by the Tatars. After Slobodushchi Yuri Komelnitsky made an arrangement with the Poles. This led many Cossacks to desert the Russians at Chidnov. At Chidnov the Russians and left bank Cossacks lost 4,200 killed, 4,000 wounded and 20,500 captives. 1660. b. Small groups of Tatars raided around the Valky and Belsky outposts and at Demshinsk, Sarev Borisov and Periyaslavl and Kolontayev. 1660 c. 
In autumn the Crimean Khan Mehmed IV Guri and the rebellious Ukrainian hetman Yuri Khmelnytsky attacked the Muscovite borders. Initially the Allies planned the destruction of those left bank towns and forts that remained loyal to Moscow. In October, the Tatars and Cossacks ravaged neighborhood of Pereyaslavl. Under the Khan were up to 80,000 Tatars and 2,000 Janissaries. Yuri Khmelnytsky led 2,000 Cossacks and 1,000 Poles. The Khan camped on the right bank of the Seam River between Konotop and Putovol. From there the Khan and Hetman sent mounted troops to the neighboring Russian districts. In November, the Tatars and Cossacks fought in the Kromi and Elitz districts and went to Nedrihelev, Karpov and Efremov. 1660 D. On 8 August there was a fierce battle on the earthen wall north of Usman between 300 Tatars and Usman service men. Both sides suffered casualties and the Tatars were driven off. 1661, the Crimeans made many raids on the Russian borderlands, mainly in the left bank Ukraine. In January, the Tatars and Sikashians fell on Okturka, destroying its outskirts and burning towns and villages. In February Crimeans raided around Putovol and Konotop. In March they went to Volny location? 1662, in January, Crimean Khan Mehmed IV Guri with up to 80,000 Tatars arrived on the left bank Ukraine. With him was the traitor Hetman Yuri Khmelnytsky with 20,000 Cossacks and 2,000 Poles. The Khan camped at the small town of Krasny near Konotop. From there he sent raiding parties to the nearby Russian districts. The Tatars destroyed the Sesk, Rilske, Putovol and Kursk districts. They appeared at Karachev, Orlov, Novosil and other places. In the Ukraine they raided by Lubny, Lokvitsia, Hadiak, Glinsk location, and Pereyaslav. 1663, Crimean Tatar troops continued military operations in the left bank Ukraine. In March, they and the Cossacks fought near Goltva and Kremenchug. They attacked Goltva twice. The Allies destroyed the neighborhoods of Gajach, Lubny, Ikni, Lokvitsa and Glinsk. In the spring they returned and raided the Putovol, Rilske and Karachev regions. Topic. 1665–1678 This is the major period of Turkish involvement in Ukraine. Doroshenko became right bank hetman, declared himself a Turkish vassal, attacked Poland and tried to take over the left bank, Polish-Cossack-Tatar War 1666 Polish victory success provoked the Polish-Ottoman War 1672 in which the Turks took Podolia. The Russians made a moderately successful intervention on the right bank Russo-Turkish War 1676-1681. If this account is correct, raids on Russian territory were few and confined to the Belgorod Line region. 1665, Stefan Opera on the right bank, Doroshenko becomes hetman, after Yuri Komelnitsky allied with the Poles. In 1661 the pro-Russian left bank Ukraine split off. See the ruin Ukrainian history. Yuri was followed on the right bank by Pavlo Teteri in 1663. After the abdication of Teteria in 1665 there were several candidates for the right bank hetman. The first was Medvedov Colonel Stepan Opera, who commanded a large rebel detachment. Opera joined with the Tartars and persuaded the inhabitants of Yumen to let him into the city, where he declared himself Ukrainian hetman. He immediately sent messengers to the Crimea, asking the Khan to recognize him and promising to allow the Crimeans and Nogay to take captive any Ukrainians who did not support him. He spread the rumor that he and his Tatar friends would soon take Kiev. Soon there arrived in the Ukraine a Tatar horde commanded Kamambe Mirza and Badr Mirza. Opera went to Bohuslav to meet with the Mirzas. Here the treacherous Tatars captured him and his elders, whom they robbed. They then attacked the Cossack camp, but the Cossacks began to resist. The battle lasted until nightfall. Tatars drew off, but in the morning again began to besiege the camp. Suddenly the Mirzas ordered the attack to stop and asked the Cossacks to elect Petro Doroshenko as hetman. Cossacks gathered in Arada and agreed to recognize Doroshenko as hetman of the right bank Ukraine. All the right bank Cossack regiments pledged allegiance to the Polish king and an alliance was made with the Crimean Khan. Newly elected Hetman Doroshenko with Cossacks and Tatars went against Opera and his supporters, sick. The Russian wiki does not explain how he got away. He promised the Mirzas gifts and asked them to give him Opera so he could be sent to the Polish king. The Mirzas handed him over and Doroshenko sent him to Bielaserkva. 
1666, Doroshenko on the right bank supports the Turks, invades the left bank and Poland. On 20 February, at a military rada, Doroshenko proposed to the starshinas and colonels to expel all of the Poles to Poland and with all cities to become subjects of the Crimean Khan, and in the spring, along with the Tatar hordes, make war on the left bank of the Dnieper. Doroshenko told Bakhchisarai and Istanbul that the Ukraine was now subject to the Khan and Sultan. After that, the Turkish government ordered the new Crimean Khan Adil Guri to go war with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In June and July the right bank Cossacks, Poles sick, and Tatars made predatory attacks on the left bank of the Dnieper, looting and burning villages, killing and taking captives. Doroshenko continued to send messengers universally to the left bank, urging local people to abandon Moscow. In autumn Doroshenko, not having at enough force of his own, sent an embassy to the new Crimean Khan, proposing a joint attack on the left bank Ukraine to force the left bank Cossacks abandon the Russian Tsar and become subjects of the superior power of Turkey. Adil Guri sent Doroshenko 30,000 Tatars under his brothers Devlet Guri, Mamet Guri and Salamat Guri. On 1 October they reached Chihiran. With them were Turkish Agas and Janissaries. Doroshenko split the Tatars into two groups, one under Salamat Guri and Mirzas was sent to the left bank immediately, and the other under Devlet Guri and Mamet Guri was held at Chihiran until they and Doroshenko could also go east. 10 to 15,000 Crimean Tatars crossed the Dnieper and began to ravage the left bank Ukrainian villages and countryside, killing and capturing the local population. Doroshenko sent two regiments of Cossacks cavalry with them. There was no large army on the left bank to repulse them. The Crimean Tatars divided into small raiding parties and started to ravage the Ukrainian villages and countryside. Some Tatar troops went to Goltva, some to near Pereyaslav, and others to Priluki. Priluki Colonel Lazar Gorlenko and his troops were absent. Cyril Zagriyashki, the Tsar's voyevode at Priluki, and his small Russian garrison could not repel the enemy attack. The Crimeans did not lay siege to the town, but devastated all the villages belonging to the Priluki Cossack regiment, even reaching Nizhin and Borzna. They took about 5,000 prisoners and crossed to the right bank of the Dnieper. Then Nuruddin Sultan Devlet Guri moved to Yuman, rested for six weeks and joined Doroshenko's Cossacks for an attack on Poland. In December Doroshenko with 20,000 Cossacks and Devlet Guri with 15,000 to 20,000 Tatars marched on Ukrainian lands of the Commonwealth. They set out against a Polish army Sebastian Machowski, which quickly began to withdraw to Bratslav. On 19 December, at the Battle of Brelov Brayla, the outnumbered 6, Poles were routed. Seventeen Polish standards were taken. Most Poles were killed or captured. Machowski was captured by Cossacks, given to the Crimean Nuruddin and sent to Crimea in chains. The broken army was chased as far as Latyshev. Returning to Chigirin, Doroshenko began a siege of the Polish garrison in the town castle, and in February 1667 began the siege of the Bila Serkva. After the victory at Brelov Cossack and Tartar raided Jydomir region, Podolia, Volhynia and Ruthenia. In Podolia the Cossacks and Crimeans were supported by the local Ukrainian rebels, Oprasheks and Daniks. Opryskov Idenik Cossack Tatar troops looted and plundered Polish lands, reaching Overich and Dubno, Lvov, Lublin and Kamenets Podolsky. Ploskirov, Zaborov, Helenieni and other cities were taken, looted and burned. They took captive up to 100,000 Polish gentry, their wives and children, their subjects and Jews, or, according to Polish prisoners, up to 40,000. Thus the right bank hetman Petro Doroshenko defeated the Polish army, refused allegiance to the Polish king and entered a military and political alliance with the Crimean Khanate. At the city of Targovica if this is Targoviste it is deep in Romania Doroshenko ordered the minting of coins with Khan's name and paid them as salary to the Cossacks. 1667, Doroshenko against Poland, Don Cossacks raid Crimea, Tatars desert Doroshenko at Podhais, in May Doroshenko made preparations for a second campaign to the Ukrainian lands of the Commonwealth. All the right bank Cossack regiments were sent Hetman's messengers, universally announcing mobilization. The regiments were to gather at Korsan. The Khan sent auxiliary troops. At the end of May a few thousand Tatars arrived under Badr Shamirza. Doroshenko sent out his men to devastate the Polish borderlands. Advanced Cossack Tatar troops under Yuman Colonel Gregory Belagrud reached the Latyshev Powiat Latyshevsky Pavet of Podolia and also Volhynia where they took many prisoners. 
In June a large Tatar horde and a Cossack regiment under Podolian Colonel Ostap Gogol joined the campaign. Tatars and Cossacks raided across Podolia to Ternopil. During July and August Krimines and Nogay carried out devastating raids to Starokonstantinov, Medzibor, Ostrog, Zislavl, Zibaraj, Vishnefts and Dubna. In early September 1667 Doroshenko with 15,000 Cossacks and 16,000–20,000 Tatars under Crown Prince Karim Guri started the next campaign against the Commonwealth. The Sultan sent 3,000 Janissaries and 12 cannon. The army moved through Starokonstantinov to Ternopil. At this time Ostap Gogol was along the Dniester, v Pridnestrov where he captured Sharavka and besieged Yarmolints. Grand Crown Hetman Jan Sobieski managed to gather a 15,000-man army which was reinforced by armed Ukrainian peasants. Sobieski divided the army into five groups which were told to protect the Polish forts in Podolia, Volhynia and Galicia Kamenets, Tarabovol, Berezani, Dubno, Brody, and others. Sobieski himself with 3,000 troops stood at Kamenets, blocking the road to Lvov. Doroshenko and Karim Guri marched out Starokonstantinov west past Zbaraj and Vishnevitz and 3 October reached Pomorian. Learning that the enemy were in Ruthina, Sobieski moved to Pithezi and built a fortified camp. The 4th of October, Karim Guri sent troops to loot and take captives. Polish troops inflicted heavy losses and most of the parties were defeated. The Tatars suffered especially heavy losses at Pomorian, Bukok, and Narayev. Zaborov surrendered without a fight and was sacked by the Tatars. Then the Cossack Tatar army reunited and headed for Lvov. On the road, the Cossack Crimean army stumbled on the 9,000 man Polish army at Podhezi, Battle of Podhase, 1667, 3,000 mercenaries and 6,000 armed peasants with 18 guns, which barred their way. On 4 October about 20,000 Cossacks and Tatars surrounded the fortified camp and fighting lasted from 6 to 16 October. Meanwhile, during the fighting at Podgates, the Zaporozhian Cossacks made a successful raid on Crimea. 4,000 Cossacks under Kosh Adaman Ivan Raj and Colonel Ivan Serko besieged and stormed Perikop, and then intruded deep into the Crimean Khanate. Ivan Raj and his men took the Arbatuk, killed all the inhabitants and destroyed its suburbs. Ivan Serko and his men marched on the fortress of Kaffa, where they ravaged the estates of the famous Sharinsky Mirzas. The Zaporozhians killed about 2,000 inhabitants, captured about 1,500 women and children, freed 2,000 slaves and returned triumphantly to the Sich. The Zaporozhian raid on the Crimean heartland angered Karim Guri and the Mirzas who never completely trusted Doroshenko. Karim Guri entered into separate negotiations with Sobieski. On 16 October the Poles and Tatars made an armistice. In the name of the Khan Karim Guri pledged not to raid Polish territory. In return the Poles promised an annual cash gift. On 18 October Sobieski allowed Karim Guri return to Crimea with all his captives. Returning home, the Tartars burned and looted 300 villages in Pokutia alone. Without allies, Doroshenko found himself in an almost hopeless position. The Cossacks began to dig trenches to defend their traveling camp. Then Crown Prince Karim Guri offered to mediate between Doroshenko and Sobieski. On 19 October they signed a peace agreement. Doroshenko himself and all the Zaporozhian host promised to be subjects of the Commonwealth. 1668, Doroshenko against the left bank, weak Russian intervention, Doroshenko marched against the pro-Moscow left bank Hetman Ivan Bryuhovetsky. The Cossack Tartar army crossed the Dnieper and Bruhovetsky collected loyal regiments and asked the Crimean Tatars for help. To help Bryakovetsky Moscow sent an army under Grigory Romodanovsky. At Arada at Budishchi Doroshenko gained the upper hand over his rival, who was killed on 1 June. The left bank regiments went over to Doroshenko, who was elected hetman of the whole Ukraine. He now had about 50,000 men, including 26,000 Tatars. Romodanovsky, seeing that he was outnumbered, raised the siege of Katelva and withdrew to Okturka. Doroshenko and 18,000 to 22,000 Cossacks and Tatars followed him. At battles at the village of Kukra and on the Mashenka River Russian soldiers repulsed all enemy attacks. Romodanovsky moved to Okturka and dug in. Doroshenko had to withdraw to Katelva. Tatars took many captives around Cherkasy and returned to the Crimea. From Roman Doroshenko sent 12,000 Tatars and 5,000 Cossacks into Russian territory. The Cossack Tatar horde broke in near Sesk and the Komaritsky Volost. 
The Sesk voivods won a series of victories and forced the enemy across the Dnieper. Nevertheless, some raiding parties destroyed Bohodukiv, Krasny Kut, Gorodnyov, Kolontayev, Morava, Kharkiv, and Sarev Borisov. Sukovi's failed revolt against Doroshenko. In the summer, the Zaporozhian Cossacks put up another candidate on the Hetman's mace. Zaporozhian military scribe Peter Sukovi Suhovinko was supported by part of the Sich Cossacks and was elected Hetman of the Zaporozhian host. Sukovi left the Sich for Bakhchisare to get support. The Khan Adil Guri received him with honor at the capital, recognized him as Hetman, gave him two princes and a horde to accompany him back to the Ukraine, and wrote to Doroshenko, now nominally a Polish subject, saying that he and his troops should go to the left bank and unite with Sukovi. Doroshenko was not going to voluntarily relinquish his mace and submit to the Khan. Soon Sukovi marched to the Ukraine with a Tatar crown prince and horde. He made camp in Lipovaya Valley on the left bank of the Dnieper. The Poltava, Mergorod, Lubny and Pereyaslav regiments recognized him as Hetman. Sukovi pursued full independence for the Ukraine based on an alliance with the Crimea. All the autumn Sukovi unsuccessfully tried to win over the left bank and other Cossack regiments that recognized Damian Manohorishny as Hetman. At the end of December Sukovi the Tatars horde crossed the Dnieper and marched against Doroshenko. Doroshenko was expecting him and placed his regiments at Chihiran. Doroshenko surrounded the Crimean Tatars, the majority of whom were forced to withdraw. Sukovi's first attempt to take the capital failed. Sukovi and the Crown Prince retreated across the river Tyasman. Here Sukovi's Cossacks and his Tatar allies were defeated by the combined forces of Ivan Serko's Zaporozhans and Doroshenko's Cossacks, who arrived from Kazelts. Sukovi's Cossacks went over to Ivan Serko. Sukovi fled. The Tatars, who were unhappy with the result of the campaign, captured him and took him to Crimea. After Sukovi's defeat at Chihiran all the right-bank colonels, Sotniks and Starshinas came to Chihiran and recognized Doroshenko as their hetman. 1669, small groups continued to raid the South Russian cities. In April they were near Kharkiv and Valyuki. Later 1,200 of them were at Ostrogosk. In August up to 1,000 were near Valyuki. Sukovi tries again, Konenko vs. Doroshenko. In July Sukovi with Zaporozhans and Crimeans made a second try against Doroshenko. Doroshenko gathered his loyalists, moved against the Tatars, could not resist them and fell back to the Rusava River. Sukovi and the Zaporozhans moved toward him. The Zaporozhian Sich recognized Sukovi at their hetman. On the left bank the Poltava, Mergorod and Lubny regiments, which had recently sworn allegiance to the Tsar, again went over to Sukovi. Doroshenko's pro-Turkish policy caused open resentment among many colonels and a large part of the right bank Cossacks. The Chigirin, Cherkasi, Belosarkva and Kanov regiments stayed with Doroshenko, while the Yuman, Kalnitsky, Pavlotsky and Korsan regiments went over to Sukovi. These last four demanded a new hetman in place of Doroshenko. The Cossacks went to Yuman and quickly organized an elective Rada. At the Yuman Rada Sukovi had to renounce the hetmanship and the majority elected as right-bank hetman the Yuman Colonel Mikhailo Konenko. Konenko wrote to left-bank hetman Damian Manohorishny and Pereyaslav Colonel Dmitroshko Recha, asking for support against Doroshenko. Doroshenko, supported by many of the right-bank regiments, flatly refused to obey the decision of Yuman Rada. He left his camp on the Rusava River and moved toward Kanov, but while crossing the Ros River near the village of Kanontia he was surrounded by the Tatar horde and besieged for five weeks. By order of the Turkish ambassador the Crimean princes had to lift the siege and withdraw their troops. Doroshenko, now freed, marched on Yuman and called for obedience from the rebel regiments. The Turkish envoy Kanaji Pasha arrived at his camp near Yuman and presented him with symbols of authority from the Sultan, Mace, Banner, Bunchik, Bunchik and Sabre. By order of the Turkish envoy the Tartars fighting against Doroshenko returned to Crimea. The Yuman people flatly refused to admit Doroshenko into their city and proposed the following agreement, Konenko would go to Arada at Chigirin which would resolve the dispute and elect a new hetman. Doroshenko raised the siege and withdrew from Yuman. But Konenko refused to go to the Rada, went to the Sich, and then to Crimea to ask the Khan for military help against Doroshenko. The Khan, princes and Mirzas supported Konenko, who soon returned to the right bank with a significant horde. With him was Yuri Komelnitsky. Doroshenko gathered his loyalists and was joined by the Budjak horde which had been sent by the Pasha of Silistria. 
At the Battle of Stebolov Konenko defeated Doroshenko, who took refuge in Stebolov. Konenko besieged town. Ivan Serko came to help Doroshenko with a new Budjak horde, drove off the Crimeans and raised the siege. After that Doroshenko, Serko and the Budjak Tatars pursued the enemy to Yumen. Konenko and Sukovi managed to flee to Sich, but Yuri Komelnitsky was seized by the Budjak Tatars and sent to Istanbul, where the Sultan shut him up in the Semibashini fortress. 1670, Kharkiv Colonel Gregory Donetsk defeated a raiding party at Marifa on the Samara River Dnieper, retook the prisoners and herds and captured four prisoners for interrogation. In May 130 Tatars came to Ostrogosk but were defeated by the local Cossack Colonel Ivan Zinkovsky. In June and July the Tatars came to Veluiki and captured 20 people, but were overtaken and defeated on the Black Kalitva River. 1671, Doroshenko asked Khan Adil Guri to join him in a war against Poland. Doroshenko besieged Bila Serkva, where there was a Polish garrison, and his brother Gregory Doroshenko and the Bratslav regiment placed themselves at the Sten Castle on the border of Polish territory. Adil Guri, on his way to help Doroshenko, was blocked by Zaporozhian Cossacks. 6,000 Cossacks under Serko and Konenko engaged the Tatars. Adil Guri, not well disposed to Doroshenko and helping him only on the orders of the Sultan, entered into negotiations with Konenko and made peace with the Zaporozhians. Doroshenko, learning of Adil Guri's separate peace immediately sent to Istanbul complaining about the Crimean Khan. In June 1671 the Turkish government removed Adil Guri from power and replaced him with Selim I Guri. At the end of March Nikaznoy Hetman Ostap Gogol with the Podolian regiment and some Budjak Tatars invaded the Latyshevsky Powiat of the Podolian Voivodstvio. Cossack Tatar troops looted and burned the neighborhood of Bar, Medzabor, Dirajnia, Old and New Senyavi, Zinkov and Gusyatin. On 20 July Doroshenko resumed the siege of the Polish garrison at Bila Serkva and sent his younger brother Gregory and 2,000 Cossacks to Podolia. He sent the Kalnitsky regiment to Crimea to help Adil Guri against Zaporozhians. Doroshenko, with no more than 5,000 to 8,000 Cossacks the rest were in garrison and 5,000 to 6,000 Tatar allies did not dare to go to war, but awaited Adil Guri before starting an offensive against Commonwealth. Most of the Budjak Mirzas who were with Gregory Doroshenko, on learning of the approach of the Polish militia, hastily left their ally and returned to their camps. Grand Crown Hetman Jan Sobieski advanced against Doroshenko and the Crimean Horde. On 26 August at Bratslav the Polish army routed the Cossack and Tartar troops. The Poles defeated the Budjak Tatars and burst into Bratslav. The Cossacks took refuge in the city castle and the broken Tatars began to retreat in panic. Sobieski led cavalry in pursuit of the Tatars while some Poles stayed in Bratslav to besiege the castle. The Poles followed the Tatars to Batorg and completely defeated them. The Cossacks in the castle learned of the defeat of the Tatars and surrendered. Amir Ali, who commanded the Budjak troops said he lost 500 men. Despite the victory, Sobieski withdrew to Bar, where he arrived on 30 August. 1671-1672, Tatar raids continued. In April 1671 400 Tatars approached Zimab and Marifa but Kharkov Colonel Gregory Donitz defeated them, released the captives and captured two prisoners for interrogation. In April 1671 300 Tatars arrived at Torsk Swamp but was defeated. In July 1671 Tatars and Bashkirs fought near Verkhny Lamov, where they took captives and drove off cattle. In August the Tatars fought near Veluiki. In April 1672 a Tatar detachment came to Myotsky. In autumn 1672 Tatar raiding parties operated near Uzerd, Koratoyak, Novi Oskol, Ostrogosk, Voronezh and other southern places. 1672, Turks take Podolia, Polish-Ottoman War 1672 begins. In April a huge Turkish army under Sultan Mehmed IV set out from Adrianople for the Commonwealth. Crimean Khan Selim Guri was ordered by the Sultan to take his horde and join the advancing Turkish army. Doroshenko gathered his loyal Cossacks for war against Poland. In early June the first Turkish and Tatar troops began arriving at Chihiran. On 25 May the Turkish army crossed the Danube at Asaksha, and in July reached Dnesta where they crossed the Polish border. Doroshenko and the Khan marched on Podolia to link up with Sultan. On 4 August the Turks, Tatars and Cossacks joined. 
On 5 August the Sultan met Doroshenko, who acknowledged himself a vassal and tributary and received a rich robe, mace and a horse. On 6 August the Sultan sent the letter to the Polish fortress of Kamenets Podolski, demanding voluntary surrender. The Kamenets garrison, hoping for help from the Polish government, rejected the ultimatum. The town was besieged on 7 August. On 17 August the Polish Commandant and Grand Vizier began negotiations on the terms of surrender. The Turkish command allowed the garrison and citizens to freely leave Kamenets with their arms and property. On 19 August the Polish commander handed over the keys to the city to the Grand Vizier. Sultan Mehmed IV made a ceremonial entry into the city and placed his pasha in the fortress with 15,000 to 20,000 troops. The Sultan left for Zhva Nets where he made camp. On 17 September Turkish troops left and continued the conquest Podolia. Bukak and Yagelnitsa surrendered to the Turks. The Turkish pashas and their troops captured about 30 Podolian towns. The Sultan sent the Khan and Doroshenko to Lvov. Sobieski sent an embassy to the Khan and asked him to become a mediator in talks between the king and Sultan. The Khan received the Polish ambassadors and agreed to mediate on the condition that the Poles evacuate Podolia and pay a yearly tribute to the Sultan. The Khan, Doroshenko and Turkish units under Kaplan Pasha moved toward Lvov. On the way Tatar and Nogai raiding parties spread out, burning villages and taking captives. On 20 September Tatars, Cossacks and Turks arrived at an Lvov which was held by Ilya Lonsky, four banners of infantry and two divisions of cavalry. The town was soon surrounded. The 25th of September to Lvov citizens sent Kaplan Pasha a gift of honor, but he would not accept it and demanded the keys to the city. The garrison refused surrender without the permission of the Polish king. Kaplan Pasha ordered an artillery bombardment and began digging tunnels under the walls. On 28 September he took by storm a fort that dominated the town. On the night of 28-29 September the Poles asked the Khan's mediation to stop the shelling of the city. On 30 September talks began between Kaplan Pasha and Polish envoys. On 7 October the Poles signed the humiliating Treaty of Bukok. The Poles were to give up the province of Podolia and pay an annual tribute of 22,000 zlotys. The right bank would belong to Doroshenko, who acknowledged the supremacy of the Sultan. After the peace treaty Turkish forces withdrew from Bukok to Zhva Nets. Turkish garrisons were placed in Kamenets, Meziboj, Bar, Yaslovitz and all the remaining Podolian cities. The Sultan ordered his pashas to cease hostilities against the Commonwealth but the Tatars for a month continued to ravage Polish territory. Polish voivods sent troops to harass the Tatars but could do little with them. Only Sobieski was able to destroy a few raiding parties. Tatar and Nogai forces began to loot the area between the Besh, San and Bug rivers. In October Sobieski got together 2,500 to 3,000 cavalry and dragoons and went after the raiding parties. The Tatars were defeated at Krasnobrod, Narl, Nemirov, Komarno and Petranka. The pro-Polish Konenko also successfully fought the Tatar raiding parties. After a defeat at Chetvertinovaya Koninko with loyal troops stood at Dubna, where he repulsed a Turkish attack, and on 5 October defeated the Tatars at Krasnostov and freed 2,000 prisoners. He next defeated the Tatars at Tomashev. People in the Ruthenian Voivodstivio formed militias, drove off the raiding parties and freed captives. On the orders of the Sultan the Khan and Doroshenko withdrew from Lvov to the Turkish camp at Zhva Nets. Here Doroshenko was again received by the Sultan and was given a gown embroidered with gold. Turkish army slowly withdrew across the Dniester, and Doroshenko and the Khan went to the Ukraine. 1673, Poles pushed back, when at Khotan, Tatars tried to break into the Russian lands but were stopped by the Belgorod Line. In May significant forces were near the line on the Tikaya Sosna River, Oskol River and surrounding districts. Tatar troops fought near Verksosensk, Uzard and Novi Oskol. In autumn Polish Ottoman hostilities resumed. Despite the Bukok Treaty, the Polish gentry government refused to pay an annual tribute to the Sultan and did not to withdraw their garrisons from Podolian towns and cities. Sobieski gathered an army and went against the Khan, who had invaded Ukraine under orders of the Sultan, and routed the main body of the Tatar hordes. Polish troops began to expel the Turkish and Tatar troops stationed in Podolia. 
In November at the Battle of Khotan 1673-30-000 Poles under Sobieski defeated 35,000 Turks under Hussein Pasha. In the battle the Turks lost 30,000 killed and captured. Only 5,000 Turks were able to escape and take refuge in Kamenets Podolsky. 1674, Poles in Ukraine, Turks fail against Sich, raids on the southern Russian towns and forts were repeated, but the number of attackers was minimal. Kalmyks joined the Tatars. Enemy troops operated near Myotsky, Torsk Lakes, Romanov and Zmiv. In November the Polish warrior King Sobieski launched a major campaign on the right bank. Bar, Bratslav and Nemirov surrendered to the Poles but Roshkov was taken by storm and the garrison slaughtered. Kalnik gave up and took the oath of allegiance to the Polish crown. Polish banners Horugva under Dmitry Vishnevetsky and Stanislav Yablonovsky crushed Cossack and Tartar troops at Zornish and Nemirov, and Polish-Lithuanian troops under Nicholas Senyevskaya and Prince Michael Casimir Rodzivil defeated the enemy in the battles at Chihiran and Pavlok. At the Battle of Pavlok 4,000 Tatars under the Nuruddin Sultan was broken. The Nuruddin Sultan was killed. In autumn 1674 the Sultan organized a campaign against the Zaporozhian Sich, and sent 15,000 select janissaries came by sea to Crimea. The Turkish government had decided to seize the Sich and destroy all the Zaporozhian Cossacks. By order of the Sultan, Selim Guri and 40,000 Tatars joined the Turkish campaign against Sich. In January 1675 15,000 Janissaries and 40,000 Tatars under Khan Selim Guri approached the Sich without being detected. Tartars surrounded the Sich and Janissaries tried to enter it, but the Zaporozhians repulsed the attack and decisively defeated the Turkish troops. 13,500 Janissaries were killed and the rest fled. The Khan retreated from the Sich back to the steppe. 1675, Turks and Poles on the right bank, Tatars and Kalmyks raid around Veluiki, Olshansk, Uzard, Usman and Kozlov. At the end of June a large Ottoman army, 20,000 to 30,000, under Sarasker Ibrahim Pasha Shaitan entered the right bank. Turkish troops crossed the Dniester at Tyagina and took the fortress of Bar. In July, at Manichin, the Turks were joined by 30,000 Tatars under Nuruddin Sultan Safaguri. Turks and Tatars moved to Lvov, devastating and burning everything in their path. During the trek, Safagari's horde separated from the Turkish army and acted independently. Polish King Jan Sobieski, learning about the new Turkish invasion, ordered the strengthening of garrisons in Podolia to delay the progress of Turkish troops. Sobieski concentrated his main force around Lvov. On 27 July the Turks stormed Zbaraj and sent Tatar troops to Podolia and Volhynia. Bukok and Zavyalov were captured. Stanislav Jan Yablonovsky defeated a large Turkish force at Zolochev. On the 22nd of August Ibrahim Pasha sent 10,000 Tatars under Safa Guri against Lvov. Jan Sobieski at Lvov had 6,000 men. Upon learning of the approaching Tatars Sobieski placed part of his forces dragoons and light cavalry in each of the four directions from which the enemy might approach. 1,200 to 1,500 hussars were held in reserve while the infantry was held with the supplies in camp near Lvov. On 24 August the Crimean Tatars approached the city and engaged in battle with the Poles. At the decisive moment Sobieski personally led 2,000 cavalry against the Tatars, who were defeated. On 20 September 10,000 men under Ibrahim Pasha besieged Terambovlia. The fortress was defended by 300 Poles who for two weeks successfully repulsed all enemy attacks. Ibrahim Pasha Shaitan lost 2,000 men, was unable to storm the fortress, raised the siege and retreated beyond the Dniester. Polish troops pursued the Turks into Moldavia, where they took and burned Suchava. 1676, Russo-Turkish War 1676-1681 begins. Small Tatar and Kalmyk bands operate around Usman, Voronezh and Olshansk. In 1676 a huge Turkish army under Ibrahim Pasha invaded the right bank. Polish King Jan Sobieski gathered 38,000 men near Lvov and went to meet them. Sobieski placed his troops in a fortified camp near Zuravno. The Turks and Crimeans took Yaslovitz, Chertkov and Galik. On 24 September 24, at the Battle of Voinilov Sobieski defeated a large Tatar force, but under the pressure of superior numbers had to withdraw. At Dovga the Tatars attacked Sobieski's main force, trying to cut off their escape route, but were repulsed. 
The Polish army retreated to Zurawno and built a fortified camp. Turco-Tatar troops completely surrounded the Polish fortified camp. On 24–26 September Tatar cavalry were under Crimean Khan Selim Guri, but on 28–29 September Ibrahim Pasha arrived with the Turkish army. On 17 October Sobieski was forced to the conclude the Treaty of Zorano with the Ottoman Empire. It revoked the clause in the Bukok Treaty about payment of yearly tribute, but confirmed the cession of Podolia. Right bank Ukraine, except the Bila Serkva and Pavlok Okrugs were under the power of the Doroshenko as a Turkish vassal. Date 1677, Turkish defeat at first Chigirin. In June the Turko-Tatar forces led Sarasker Ibrahim Pasha and the Crimean Khan Selim Guri crossed Dniester and came to Chigirin seeking to return the right bank to the Ottoman Empire. The siege began in early August. Chigirin was under the command of the garrison commander, Major General A. Trauernicht. Turks and Tartars besieged the town for a month but could not take it. On 26 August Russo-Cossack troops under Boyar Prince Grigory Romodanovsky and Hetman Ivan Samoilovich brought under fire a Turko-Tatar army crossing the Dnieper to the right bank at the Buzhinsky Pier. Turks and Tatars made a frontal attack, but were repulsed with rifle and cannon fire. The fight at the river crossing lasted three days. Turkish Tatar army retreated, losing 20,000 men killed. Romodanovsky and Samoilovich took Chigirin, restored the ruined fortifications, left a 15,000-man garrison and returned to the left bank. Sultan locked up Ibrahim Pasha in Yedekule, the Semibashini Seven Towers castle, and Crimean Khan Selim Guri was deposed and exiled to the island of Rhodes. Murad Guri became the new Crimean Khan in 1678 and in March of that year led a destructive raid on Periaslavl. 1678–2 Nd Chigirin, Yuri Kamelnitsky against the left bank, the second campaign of the Turkish Tatar army in Chigirin. In the summer a 100,000-man Turkish army under Kara Mustafa Pasha and 50,000 Crimean Tatars under Khan Murad Guri again besieged Chigirin. The garrison consisted of 5,000 Streltsy and 7,000 Cossacks and was first commanded by Voyevod Ivanish Heski, who was killed during the siege, and then by Colonel Patrick Gordon. To the rescue came Russo-Cossack regiments under Prince Grigory Romodanovsky and left bank Hetman Ivan Samoilovich who on 12 July made a fighting crossing of the Dnieper at the Buzinskaya Fords. The next battle was at the Strelnikov Hill, about a mile from Chihiran which dominated the whole area. The battle was inconclusive for both sides. The attempt to lift the siege failed and on the 11th of August the city was taken and the Russian garrison was forced to leave. However the Turko-Tatar army was not able to cross the Dnieper and in October the troops of Kara Mustafa and Murad Guri returned to the southern Bug River and the Crimea. They did not attack Kiev, which had only 106 men in garrison under Voyevod Prince Mikhail Golitsyn. Thus, the Ottoman Turks and Crimean Tatars were not able to secure the right bank Ukraine. The Turks released Yuri Komelnitsky and tried to set him up as a vassal hetman. In December, Yuri Komelnitsky sent messengers to the left bank Ukrainians, urging them to recognize him as hetman and submit to his authority, to avoid ruin and captivity. Following this, Ivan Yemenchenko, with two Tatar mirzas sent to him by the Crimean Khan, crossed the Dnieper at Stak and bypassing the towns of the Pereyaslav regiment went to Oster and Kozlitz. The Crimean Tatars, taking loot and prisoners, began to return, but on the way back were overtaken at the village of Gluboki and defeated by Pereyaslav Colonel Ivan Lysenko, who rescued all the captives. In December Yuri Komelnitsky and Crimean Tatars made a ruinous raid on the left bank Ukraine. The small town of Veremyivka, whose inhabitants could not defend themselves was the first place that fell to him. After Veremyivka followed small towns of Chagrin Dubrava, Garoshin, Garodishchi and Zavnin. Yuri Komelnitsky's messengers called on the right bank residents and peasants, who had recently fled to the left bank, to return home. Those who gave up, about 3,000, Yuri ordered to move to Jabotin. On 27 January 1679, Yuri sent messengers from Zavnin to the towns of the Murgorod Regiment, demanding submission. At this time, Ivan Yanenchenko and Tatars came to Lubny and surrounded it. Inside were Lubny Colonel Ilyashenka and Akotny Colonel Novitsky. Many residents began to lean to Komelnitsky. Against Komelnitsky came the Poltava and Murgorod colonels, and from Sumy came Major General Gregory Kasigov with the Sumy and Okturka regiments. Hetman Ivan Samoilovich and a Cossack troop marched from Baturin and arrived in Konotop. 
Poltava Colonel Levinase defeated Komelnitsky at Zavnanoy and forced him to retreat to Lukamil. Yuri stayed there three days and was not able to persuade local people to join him, and then returned to the Dnieper with a Tatar horde. He was joined by Yanenchenko. Yuri went to Nemirov and Yanenchenko to Korsan. The Crimean princes sent by the Khan to help him split up, the crown prince returned to Crimea, and Nuruddin Sultan with 7,000 men again crossed to the left bank. Small Tatar troops ravaged the territory of the Murgorod regiment and took many prisoners. On the way back they were attacked by Gregory Kasigov with Russian Cossack troops. Ivan Samoilovich gave him selected Cossacks from the Gajach, Murgorod and Kumpaneski regiments. Russians and Cossacks defeated the Tatars, recaptured the prisoners, captured a Tatar banner and nearly captured the Nuruddin Sultan. The wounded Nuruddin with the rest of his horde fled to the right bank. Russian troops and Cossacks also crossed the Dnieper and chased the Tatars to the Little Ingolitz River, and returned to Karaburda. Topic: 1677 to 1699. After the Turkish disaster at Vienna in September 1683, Austria and Poland formed an alliance to push the Turks south. Polish-Ottoman War, 1683 to 1699. In 1686, Russia joined in Russo-Turkish War, 1686 to 1700. After the Turks were pushed out of Hungary in 1687, fighting was inconclusive. In the Crimean campaigns of 1687 and 1689 the Russians failed in an attempt to invade Crimea. In 1695 Russia tried to take some forts on the lower Dnieper. By the treaties of 1699–1700 Turkey lost Hungary to Austria, Podolia to Poland and Azov, temporarily, to Russia. 1677–1678 Sikh, raids of Crimean Tatars and Kalmyks near Verksosensk, Novi Oskol, Uzard and Usman. 1679, in July and August Azov, Crimean and Nogai Tatars with 8,000 men came to Chuhuv, Pechenegi, Saltov, Kharkiv, Balaklaya, Surkov, Sokolov and other places. Kharkiv Colonel Gregory Donets won another victory, driving the Tatars into the forests and drowning them in rivers and freeing all the Russian captives. 1680, in January, Crimean Khan Murad Guri made a ruinous attack on the southern Russian lands. The Khan with up to 100,000 men crossed the river Merle on the Morovsky Trail and approached Belgorod. Not crossing the wall, he sent Nuruddin Sadat Guri, three Mirzas and 4,000 men to capture prisoners for interrogation. The Nuruddin crossed the wall, went to Volny with 2,000 men, the rest going to other towns. At the same the Khan sent raiding parties to the surrounding area. The Crimeans were around Belgorod, Karpov, Volny, Zolachev, Olshansk, Kharkiv, Baki, Bogotakov, Krasnokit, Okturka, Kolontivo, Morava, Rublev and Kalimak. During this campaign the Tatars captured 3,014 people. 1681–1682, Crimean Tatars fought near Sarev Borisov and Torsk lakes this may be Slavyansk. Kalmyk troops were around Voronezh, Usman, Penza, Lower and Upper Lamov. 1683, Cossacks raid the Budjak Tatars, at the end of the year right bank hetman Stefan Kunitsky gathered a 5,000-man Cossack army and made a campaign against the Budjak Tatars. In the end of November Cossack regiments took Nagai, slaughtered the Turkish garrison and went to Kishinev where they joined the army of Moldovan Hospodar Stefan Petrisesu. The combined army had about 15,000 to 18,000 men and was led by Kunitsky. On 5 December, at the Battle of Tyagin, they defeated a 25,000-man Turco-Tatar army led under Tyagin Bey Ali Pasha. V -bit -v Tyagin might be an old name for Bender, Moldova? According to contemporaries, the Tyagin Trail was strewn with enemy dead for four miles Sick. Among those killed were Tyagin Bey Ali Pasha, Aligar Pasha, the leader of the Budjak Horde, and several important Tatar Mirzas. Ukrainian Cossacks looted and destroyed the Budjak tribal camps ULUS around Bilhorod and Ackerman another name for Bilhorod, captured the Turkish forts at Ismail and Kilia near Ismail on the Danube, and reached the shores of the Black Sea. Cossacks tried to take Tyagin and Belgorod, but had to raise the siege because of the lack of artillery. The lands of the Budjak horde were devastated and burned. Crimean Khan Haji Guri, learning of the defeat of the Budjak Tatars, gathered 10,000 to 12,000 men and went against Kunitsky. 
At the end of December Kunitsky with 10,000 to 12,000 Cossacks and Moldavians left Budjak and began to cross the Prut River near the village of Tobak, not far from the town of Reni, Ukraine. Here on 30 December they were suddenly attacked by Tatar cavalry under Khan Haji Guri. Kunitsky built a fortified camp and successfully repelled the Tatar attacks. On the night of 3 to 4 January 1684 the Moldavian allies betrayed the Cossacks and left the Cossack camp. In this situation Kunitsky with the Cossack cavalry about 2000 broke through the enemy ring and crossed the Prut. The Cossack infantry about 4, under Andrei Mogila also broke out and crossed the Prut near Boyanova, but suffered heavy losses. By 10 January only 5,000 Cossacks reached Jassy. 1684, in May, in a battle near Studenitz Tatars destroyed a Cossack detachment under the command of the new right bank hetman Andrei Mogila, capturing 200 Cossacks. In July at the Battle of Skala a 3,000-man Polish Cossack army under regimenters Michal Zhevuski defeated 2,000 Tatars. The Crimeans lost about 500 men and 30 Mirzes were captured. 1688, the Khan invaded the southern Polish territories and devastated Volhynia, and, according to the chronicles, carried away 60,000 people. In the same year there was a campaign near Poltava. In June 1688, a 1,500-man Turco-Tatar force defeated a small Polish unit in the Battle of Novoselka. 1691, in September, in a battle near Parita in Moldavia Polish troops under Nadborny Crown Marshal Jerome Lubomirski defeated a large Tatar horde. 1692, Petrik and the Sich against the left bank. In January, a man called Petrik, also called Petr Ivanovich or Petr Ivanenko, a military clerk, Vojskovi Konsularist, Vojskovoy Kancelarist, left the Ukraine for the Sich and began to call for a military alliance with the Crimean Khan against the pro Moscow left bank hetman Ivan Mazepa. Mazepa demanded the return of this thief and cheat, but the Sich refused. Petrik gained the favor of the Zaporozhians and was even elected military clerk Kashevi Pazar, Izbrin Kosovum Pisarum of the Zaporozhian host. In spring Petrik and a small detachment of Cossacks went to the Crimea and in May he concluded a military alliance with Khan Sade Guri, who agreed to give him military aid in the conquest of the left bank Ukraine. Some of the Zaporozhians joined Petrik. In July a Rada was called at Kemeny Zatin Stone Creek and Petrik was proclaimed Ukrainian hetman. The Khan sent a horde under the Crown Prince. They planned to first subdue the Cossack frontier townships on the Samara River and then go after the Poltava Regiment. Mazepa began to gather troops to repulse the Tatars and appealed to the Russia for help. In late July Mazepa sent five regiments to the border, and stayed at Hadiak with five regiments to await the arrival of the Moscow Voyevod and selected units of three other Cossack regiments. On 28 July he sent messages to the entire Ukrainian population, urging them to remain faithful to the Russian Tsar and Mazepa's power as hetman. Some towns on the Oral River recognized Petrik. Ivan Mazepa and a Cossack army moved out of Gajach to Poltava. On 5 August the advanced troops, who had been sent to the Vorskla River, moved to the Oral River and approached Mayachka where they encountered the Crimean Crown Prince, who was looting the nearby villages and taking captives. On the approach of the left bank Cossacks the Crimeans hastily retreated to the steppes and returned to Perikop. The Cossacks chased the Tatars and Petrik, but could not catch up with them. Petrik and a small group of supporters spent three months around Perikop. At the end of September he left Perikop for Bakhchisarai. The Turkish Sultan replaced Khan Sade Guri with Selim Guri, who arrived from Istanbul in December. The new Khan promised Petrik military support against Mazepa, the left bank and the Russian government. After the retreat of the Crimean horde Mazepa immediately disbanded Cossack regiments and sent them home. Meanwhile Petrik and influential Mirzas pushed for another attack on the left bank Ukraine. 1693, Russians push back Tatars and Petrik. In January Selim Guri sent a horde against the Ukraine under his son-in-law, the Nuruddin Sultan the Nuruddin was the third in rank after the Khan and the Kalga or Crown Prince strictly designated successor, and not necessarily the Khan's son. Petrik and a small group of supporters went with the horde. Selim Guri ordered Nuruddin and Petrik first go to the Sich and call for a joint campaign against the left bank towns. If they did not give up, then the Khan ordered that should would be taken by storm and destroyed. The Khan himself and the main force would set out in spring. The Nuruddin and Petrik sent to host a proclamation calling upon the Cossacks to join the Tartar hordes. 
However Zaporozhye Cossacks remained loyal to Moscow and refused to participate in the attack on the Ukrainian lands. Crimean Tatars moved to the towns of Paravolokhna and Kaishenki, but the local residents flatly refused to give up and accept the Hetman Petrik. Then Petrik and the Tatar horde went to Poltava, the center of the Cossack regiment of that name. They ravished the surrounding area, killing and taking prisoners. Petrik unsuccessfully called on the Poltava population to give up and accept him as Hetman. Back in December Mazepa informed Moscow of the impending Tatar invasion of Left Bank. The Russian government ordered the Boyar Boris Sheremetev with a 40,000-man army come to the aid of Mazepa. Russian troops occupied all the Cossack frontier towns on the Samara River note how far south this is. The Poltava colonel refused to help Petrik and gathered the loyal Cossacks in his regiment to repel the Crimean Tatars. News of the approach of the Sheremtev's Russian army and Mazepa's Cossacks forced the Nuruddin into an immediate retreat. Crimean horde with numerous captives left the steppe. During the second Tatar attack Mazepa and Cossack army moved from Baturin to Lubny, and spread along the Dnieper several city and volunteer regiments. Petrik and his supporters retreated with the Tatar horde to Crimea. Here Petrik constantly called Crimean Khan Selim Guri to continue the fight against the Russian state. Mazepa kept the Russian government informed about all the designs Petrik and sent messengers to all the left bank Cossack regiments, urging them to be ready to fend off a new Tatar invasion. In June the right bank colonels Seaman Pali and Andrea Bazin utterly defeated the Tatar horde in the battle for the little town of Smelaya. In October, they and two left bank colonels defeated the Crimean Tatars on the Kodama River. 1694, early in the year Petrik again sent to the Sich, promising to soon come with the Crimean horde to win back the left bank Ukraine from Moscow. In summer the Zaporozhians began military operations against the Khanate and made two military campaigns against the Tartars. The Cossack raid forced retreat of the Nuruddin, who was raiding in the Sloboda Ukraine. In September Mazepa organized a campaign against the Crimean Tatars. Cossack troops under Chernagov Colonel Yakub Lizagov marched to the open steppe along the Dnieper. Joining forces with Kvastovsky, S. H. Vastovskom Polkovnikom Colonel Seaman Pali, Yakub Lizagov with a Cossack corps marched to the mouth of the Dnieper and stormed the fortress of Polanka, capturing booty and captives. 1696, in January Selim Guri made a devastating raid on the left bank. Tatars and Nogay took captives along the Oral River, stormed and burned the small towns of Kitai Gorodik and Kaishenka, besieged Kaleberda, and then went to Goltva, where the Cossack troops were gathered to resist the raiders. The colonels had to withdraw due to the unauthorized flight of many of the Cossacks. The Crimeans burned villages near the towns of Ostap, Bila Serkva and Bogachka and then moved to Gajach. On the way they sent out raiding parties and took captives. Mazepa collected troops and marched from Baturin to Priluki. 30,000 Budjak Tatars crossed the Bug and moved on Kremenchug to join the Crimean Horde. With the Budjak Nogay was Petrik. The Nogay besieged the Ukrainian border towns of Podak and Amelnik. Petrik sent messengers to the besieged towns, urging them to give up and recognize him as Hetman. In response, Mazepa sent messengers to the left bank, offering a large amount of money as a reward for killing Petrik. Mazepa and his army moved from Priluki in Lokvitsia, just east of Okturka. Voyevod Sheremetev with Russian troops was at Okturka and urged Mazepa to join him. But, because of the danger of Tartar attacks on Baturin, Mazepa remained at Lokvitsa. Soon after the united Crimean and Budjak hordes split into two groups, the Crimeans went to devastate the Poltava regiment and the Budjak Tatars raided along the Dnieper. Mazepa sent the Priluki regiment from Lokvitsa to Poltava, ordered the Gajach, Mergarod and Poltava regiments to join them and the Lubensky and Akotny a Hotnij Cossack regiments to advance against the Nogay. Mazepa and the remaining Cossacks moved inward Okturka to join Sheremetev's Russians, but only reached Reshevka on the Sayal River when, on 1 February, he learned that the Nogay and Tatars, along with their captives, had retreated to their steppes. Ukrainian Cossacks captured many Tatars in the woods along the Vorskla River. After the withdrawal of the Crimean Kalga, Crown Prince Mazepa sent the town, Gorodovy Cossacks to their homes and the Akotny Ahotny regiments to their stanitses. Near Kishenko, the self styled Hetman Petrik was killed by a Cossack. In February, 8,000 to 12,000 Tatars under Kalga Sheba's Guri, Prince Sadat Guri, and Gaza Guri broke through the polished blockade of Kamenets Podolsky and delivered food supplies to the Turkish fort and moved on to raid the southern Polish territory. 
Crown Grand Hetman Stanislaw Jan Jablonowski gathered near Lvov a 4,000-man Polish militia. On February 11–12, in a battle near Lvov the Poles defeated the superior forces of the Crimean Tatar Horde. 1698, in September 14,000 Tatars under Kalga Sultan Kaplan Guri made a ruinous raid on Podolia. On 8–9 September, at the Battle of Podhase 1698, the last Polish-Tatar battle, 6,000 Poles under Crown Field Hetman Felix Kazimierz Potocki defeated the Tatar Horde. Topic 1700 to 1769. During the Russo-Swedish War, 1700 to 21, left bank Hetman Ivan Mazepa revolted against Russia. The Swedish king joined him, and both were defeated at Poltava in 1709. Both fled to Turkey. The Turks declared war. Peter the Great tried to invade Turkey and was defeated in the Russo-Turkish War, 1710 to 11. In 1736, during the Austro-Russian-Turkish War 1735 Russians invaded Crimea, but withdrew because of plague. After the Russo-Turkish War 1768 Crimea became a Russian dependency and was annexed in 1783. The right bank was annexed in 1793. During this period raiding was confined to Ukraine except for one raid by Kuban Tatars along the Volga. 1700–1710, these years are omitted from the Russian Wikipedia article. 1711, Russians defeat Tatars on the right bank. The right bank was attacked by Prince Mehmed Guri, son Devlet II Guri, supporters of Pilip Orlik who was chosen hetman in exile by Mazepa's supporters after Mazepa's death, and a number of Zaporozhians under Kosh Otaman Kostya Gordienko. In the campaign were 40,000 Tatars, 7,000 to 8,000 Cossacks, 3,000 to 5,000 Poles, 700 Swedes and 400 Turkish Janissaries. They laid siege to the Bila Serkva. When the Tatars turned to looting civilians and taking captives, Orlik's Cossacks began deserting en masse to defend their villages. In February the Crimean Tatars captured Bratslav, Bohuslav and Nemirev, the small garrisons of which offered virtually no resistance. Ivan Skoropadsky, Mazepa's de facto successor on the left bank sent to the right bank the Kompaneski regiment under General Asal Stepan Budovich. In the Battle of Lysyanka Budovich was severely defeated and barely escaped. In March Orlik and Mehmed Guri besieged Bila Serkva, which was defended by a small Russo-Cossack garrison. The Cossacks and Crimeans were unable to storm the town and lost about 1,000 men. From Bila Serkva Orlik and Mehmed Guri retreated fastiv. Cossacks and Tatars tried to attack Cherkasy, Kanev and Chigirin, but were repulsed. Peter the Great sent to the right bank Russian troops under Prince Dmitry Golitsyn. At their approach Mehmed Guri and Orlik began to retreat to the steppe. On 15 April at Bohuslav Golitsyn caught the Tartars and rescued more than 7,000 prisoners. At the end of April Orlik and Mehmed Guri returned to Bender. At this time Khan Devlet Guri with 30,000 to 40,000 men invaded the left bank and besieged and captured the Novosergievsky fortress on the upper Samara River. The Cossacks gave up without a fight. Devlet Guri then moved to Kharkiv and Izium, but was defeated in early March and retreated to Crimea. 1713, Crimean Tatars, Nogay and Azov people ravaged the southern Kazan and Voronezh Govororates, the lands of Don Cossacks and Kharkiv Regiment, at the time the Kazan Gubernia ran from Kazan south to the Caspian Sea. To the west of it the Azov Gubernia ran from Kozlov to Azov. Its name was changed to Voronezh Gubernia in 1715, the Tatars captured 14,000 people and killed more than 2,000. 1714, Crimean Tatars and Azov people made a raid Saritsyn i.e. Stalingrad. The lands of Don Cossacks, the Kharkiv and Izium regiments were also raided. 1715, Crimean Mirza Mambe Bey made ruinous attack on the Don Cossack area. The Crimean Tatars also raided the Kharkiv and Izium regiments. That same year, Kuban Sarasker Bakhti Garay Delhi Sultan made a large raid to Saritsyn and Astrakhan. Near Astrakhan Bakhti Guri captured 1220 Nogai tents and resettled them beyond the Kuban River. Then Bakhti Garai made numerous forays on the Kalmyk Khan tribes of Ayuka Khan, a Russian vassal. Kuban Tatars ravaged many Kalmyk and Nogai tribes 10,300 Nogai families were forced to move to the Kuban. 
1716, Crimean Tatars, Turks and Azov people ravaged the Dmitrievsky used of the Voronezh gubernia and raided Tombov Sikh, this is very far north the Don Cossack country, Kharkiv and Izium regiments 1717, Crimean Tatars raided the land of Kharkiv and Izium regiments in Sloboda Ukraine. Kuban Sarasker Bakhti Guri Delhi Sultan with the Kuban Horde, Turkish and Azov troops launched a major campaign in the southern Russian lands. The Kuban people ravaged the outskirts of Saritsyn, Penza, Simbursk, Saratov, Insar, Petrosk and Lamov these places are along the Volga. If this raid list is complete this would be the last raid to get that far north, around 30,000 were captured. 1718, Bakhti Guri led an expedition to the land of Don Cossacks, where besieged but were not able to storm the town of Cherkosk. Many Cossacks and Yurt Kalmyks or Tovsky Kalmyki were killed or captured. That same year, Crimean and Kuban Tatars raided lands of the Kazan Gubernia and the Kharkiv and Izium regiments. 1719–1722, Crimean Tatars and Azov people made devastating raids on the Kharkiv, Izium, Poltava and Mergorod regiments Sloboda Ukraine and the land of Don Cossacks. 1723, Crimean Tatars, Nogay and Azov people raided the Bakhmut, Poltava and Mergorod regiments and the land of Don Cossacks. 1724, Crimean Tatars and Azov people raided the Bakhmut, Poltava and Merhorod regiments, the land of Don Cossacks and the Yurt Kalmyks. 1725, Crimean Tatars raided Bakhmut. 1726, Crimeans continued to raid around Bakhmut and the Don Cossack country. 1727, Crimeans and Azov people raided the land of Don Cossacks and Bakhmut. 1728, Crimean Tatars and Azov people raided the land of Don Cossacks and Bakhmut. The Khan was joined by Badr Taisha with Yurt Kalmyks. 1729, Crimeans and Azov people raided Bakhmut and the Don Cossack lands. 1730, Crimean Tatars and Azov Turks attacked the Don Cossack lands, and the Merhorod and Bakhmut regiments. 1731–1732, Crimean Tatars and Azov people raided the Don Cossacks, the Bakhmut and Mergorod regiments and Kabarda in the North Caucasus. 1733, Crimean Horde made an unsuccessful campaign in the North Caucasus. A second Crimean Tatar Horde ravaged the land of Don Cossacks and the Bakhmut and Izium regiments. 1734, Crimean Tatars, and Azov Turks and Kuban Tatars made devastating raids on the land of Don Cossacks, on the Bakhmut and Poltava regiments. 1737, in February the Crimean Tatars made a new attack on the left bank Ukraine, where they captured many prisoners. Major General Yuri F. Leslie was killed in a skirmish with the Crimeans while crossing the Dnieper at Paravolokna. 1739, on 15 26 New Style, February the Horde crossed the Dnieper near the territory of the Mergorod Regiment. Thanks to activity of Major General Ivan Bakhmetov the Horde was defeated. Bakhmetov, warning the Mergorod Cossacks of the Tatar approach, hastily moved from Kremenchug to Vlasavka with a group of several grenadier troops, Grenaderska Rot about 600 Rishki Dragoons and 1500 Mergorod Cossacks. Bakhmetov's troops caught the Tatars two hours after their river crossing. After a six-hour battle the Tatars were forced to retreat beyond the Dnieper. Around 4,000 warriors, 30 Mirzas and two Sultans were drowned in the specially constructed ice holes on the Dnieper or were killed. On 19 February what was left of the Horde went to the Crimea. 1756–1763, during the Seven Years' War between Russia and Prussia the Nogai Tatars made devastating raids on the South Russian lands. 1769, Khan Kurum Guri led a large and the last in history campaign on the Russian lands. Crimean Tatars and Nogay ravaged New Serbia near Elizavetgrad and took a significant number of prisoners. On 15 January 70,000 Crimean Tatars crossed the Russian border and moved to New Serbia Elizavetgrad province. Crimean Khan was planning to go to Poland, to connect with the Confederation of Bar, this was also the time of the Kolejewszyna uprising, they were guided by Polish priests. The Khan approached Elizavetgrad, but was greeted by artillery fire. The Khan decided not to storm the well-protected town and spread his men out in small detachments to plunder and take prisoners in the nearby Russian and Polish territories. Having devastated much of New Serbia and seized a large number of prisoners, the Crimean Khan returned to Perikop, 1772, 1793, 1795, the partitions of Poland. 
The Polish Commonwealth disappeared, and much of its eastern lands went to Russia, much simplifying the political scene. 1774, Crimea became a Russian vassal, in the Treaty of Kuchuk Kynarji Russia gains Azov. 1777, Crimeans raid Greater Kabardia in the North Caucasus. 1783, Russia annexed Crimea. See also Turkish abductions Barbary slave trade Ottoman wars in Europe Kulmik Khanate Sources This is a translation of the corresponding article in the Russian Wikipedia as of 16 April 2013, with a few changes. The best book in English is probably, Brian L. Davies' Warfare, State and Society on the Black Sea Step 1500-1700. 2007. Michael Khodarkovsky, Russia's Steppe Frontier. 2002 It is somewhat better on the steppe peoples caught between Russia and Crimea. Notes External links The Crimean Tatars and their Russian captive slaves Slave trade in the early modern Crimea <laughs>